Uh, speaking of Canada, okay, so you're here, PPP. How did you first meet PPP? Um, I worked at a call center. So when I, I lived in Kitchener, Waterloo for like three, four years. And I, I dated this girl, you know, my ex-girlfriend. We lived together for like four years, right? And I, I still think of her. <laughs> no, that goes... I don't have that, but uh, I've been in that situation before. Uh, yeah, but so anyways, when we first broke up, you know, I wanted to sort of reconcile things with her. So it came, a local fucking call center in Oregon. It's tough, man. I've been in that spot where you're trying to get back together, uh, like a long-term relationship, and you're like trying, especially as a dude, you're like, oh, no, this is going to, I got this, this is coming back. Uh, and then it doesn't come back usually. But. Well, well, I, lo I love her, right? Like, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, I know what you, yeah. You know, like, I'll say that. You know, yeah. I know it sounds pretty fucking soft, but you no, know, it I, sounds I really soft. No, I know. No, believe me. I know exactly what you mean. It sounds soft as fuck, but when you're in that spot, it doesn't sound soft. And you, and if, yeah, if you, if you, yeah, if you really love that chick, yeah, yeah, I can fuck with you for sure. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So, so anyways, a local call center, um, was here in Peterborough. Um, I moved back in with my parents, right. And, um, there was a local call center that was here in Peterborough and in Kitchener where she was. So, of course, when I was looking for a job, that's where I wanted to go. So I, I, suck out a, I, I seeked out a job there, and um, I came from door-to-door -door sales, so I could really get any fucking job I wanted in sales. So I, um, I applied there. I got the fucking job. Um, my first fucking, the first time I was ever introduced to PPP was my trainer. So my trainer for this job, her uh, very first training class she did when she became a trainer, PPP was a member of that training class. <laughs> so she had like the graduation photo of that first training class is like her background on her computer, right? And as I'm sitting there in training class, I noticed that. And I, I saw PPP and I said, wow, that guy looks fucking retarded. <laughs> I said, I want to fucking meet that guy. So that's how you first met him. See, I kind of thought you knew him, like, even longer than that. Like, you guys went back into childhood or grew up in the same area or something. But no, that's how you met him. We went to the same high school. But, really? Um, like, I'm... Know. Like, PVP is like 25, right? I'm 29. So by the time I graduated high school, he was just entering high school. So I never knew him when we were kids. Um, but when I was, uh, this is like when I was like 20, this is 2014. Um, so I wasn't on the internet at that point, but this is in the, uh, you know, the renowned days of Gamergate. <laughs> you know? The days of lore. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh... <laughs> yeah, way before I was ever on the fucking internet. But um, so I, I thought that when I finally got onto the floor, I met PPP. And in the workplace, this is leading up to Trump's election, right? Actually, this is 2015 when I'm working at Nordia, and it's leading up to Trump's election. And everyone on the floor is like a normie tier fucking liberal idiot. And PVP, like his whole character on the floor, he's just the abrasive fucking Trump guy. <laughs> he's fucking, right. you know, he fucking, he just say like our fucking, the, the hiring manager, Scott, he, um, he was like, he, he like, he watched Rachel Maddow every night, right? Like he was just fucking like this liberal fucking idiot, but he was pretty funny the way he laughed. Um, so, uh, so what, 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 Dan sent $3. Can you tell us about the satanic cult and Ashton's involvement? We're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to go. We're going, I'm starting it here. We're just starting at the beginning. Uh, but yes, we will talk. About One that. step at a time. Right. Sweet. Jesus. Right. Not, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I want people. And I told him this. I was like, I just want the, I just want the real story. And we're probably just going to start at the beginning and go through like that. Um, and then organically, if something comes up. Uh, but anyway, continue with what you're saying. Yeah. So like PVP would have fucking arguments with Scott, right? Where they'd be fucking with each other. And I always thought it was hilarious. Like Scott would always brush him off and go like, Whoa, oh, oh, oh. and his fucking laugh. I always thought was funny. And PVP would go on about Trump and all this stuff. Right. But I always like, I took a liking to PVP there. I sort of agreed with him on a lot of these things that he would say. And, um, 
we we never like we go out drinking with everyone from the floor, but I never really interacted with PPP one on one up until that point. So about like three four months later, um, into me working at Nordia, um, PPP had a poker tournament at his house. Um, PPP's whole family's right into fucking poker, right? So they uh, they had a poker tournament, um, and uh, PPP invited everyone on the floor. And I was the only one that showed up. You know, I thought it would be this big event, but no one showed up but me. So it was like me and PPP and his, like, fucking father and all his father's friends playing poker. And it was a pretty good night. And then at the end of that, like, PPP got, like, a fight with his dad. (laughs) You know, he was, like, making fun of his dad and his dad's friends. And they got in this big fight. So me and PPP fucked off and went downstairs, and we were smoking fucking poppers, right? I was getting them smoking weed. And he uh, first he started playing me Joe Rogan, and then all of a sudden he start he goes here look look at this RJ and he starts playing fucking Moon Man, and you know and this is when I was more of a normie tier person so he starts playing Moon Man and I was rattled. I said this is racist. Moon Man's a bit shocking if you're coming from the normie yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, Moon Man's fucking based. I, I quickly. I like learned. Moon Man now. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you're just like a regular person and they hit you with some shocking Moon Man, you might be like, "Whoa, what the fuck?" <laughs> like, I, I remember yeah. the first time I heard Moon Man, right? Uh, and he, and I wasn't a normie even then, uh, but still, the first time I heard Moon Man, I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> like, it was funny as fuck. I was laughing, but I was also like. Shocked a little bit. Uh, it was the Emily Yukas Eminem. Uh, what is it? It's the My Name Is, actually. The one, the first one I remember hearing was that one. It's still, I think, my favorite. Um, I even played that one. I remember my mom, uh, RIP, by the way. I love my mom. Uh, Mother's Day coming up here. Uh, but I remember I even played that song for my mom. And it's so bad. But it's so funny. And she knew the, ori- she knew the original version, too, because I used to play that one for her. She was oh, actually I- laughing. Laughing. Yeah, bro. She was I, laughing I at Moon Man. Shit for my mom and I played yeah, Boss dude, she was laughing at Moon Man. Like, she my was mom's definitely starting to get fucking woke about the Jews. You know, my mom's starting to fucking realize the truth about the Jewish question, at least. But it's 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 it, it takes a bit of fucking work. Process. The yeah. last time I ever played that stuff, because I've stopped playing that stuff recently in the uh, in the car. I just you know I've gotten over it. But uh, the last time was at Christmas. I got fucking shittered at my grandparents' house on Christmas Eve. And on the way home, it's me, my mom's boyfriend, and my brother, and I put on an Alabama nigger no. on the Lambo. <laughs> and they were fucking just silent, you know. They were fucking, what the fuck? <laughs> Styling. By the way, that was a soft day there, sure. Uh, I don't know if some people misheard there. Now, uh, continue with the uh, PPP story. No, what, that uh, was the soft day. That was definitely the soft day. Now, <laughs> continue. Was- that was soft day. Now he's Canadian. You guys, you know what I mean. Like it's different up there. It sounds a little bit different, but that was the soft day. Now what? Well, we're on cozy, Ralph. We won't get a dumper <laughs> bank for that sort of. Comment. Now, now what? Now what happened? <laughs> what happened with uh, PPP? So how did you get to be friends? I guess you mentioned his family and stuff like that. How did you get to like? I mean, you guys live together in that fucking house that you're in right now. Um, like how did it go from a guy you met basically at work to, you know, standing? Well, in? well, so after that poker tournament, you know, I uh, developed an affinity for the guy. We started out, from there on out when we go out and drink with everyone else on the floor, I'd bring him back to my house afterwards and we'd smoke some bowls in my garage and we'd debate like uh, religion and politics and this sort of thing. And um, at first, like, he would bring up that the Holocaust was a scam and all these things to me, right? And I I was real fucking, like, I would debate back to him against that, like, from more of an army perspective. And he would always say to me, he said, you know what, RJ? He said, one day you're going to realize I'm right. And you know what? I did realize he was right, you know, but that's, um, I think that's something that's very important. It is very important that we are able to realize when we're wrong and we're able to grow and we're able to, I, I really care about the truth. Right. And I was wrong. So I admitted I was wrong and I learned the truth. Um, now the same thing with religion, the, the main thing that we would are, that we would debate about was religion. 
at that point in my life, I was a Luciferian. Like, not that I identified as a Luciferian, but looking back on my ideology and my worldview at that time, it was Luciferian. Um, in the sense that, like, Luciferianism is God through knowledge, right? That through the sciences and through understanding of knowledge and logic, we can become like God. And I thought I was God, right? Like, I had a lot of pride and vanity at that point in my life. And I thought I, I wanted to live forever. And I, uh, I thought that through transhumanism and, uh, and through science, if I gained enough of an understanding, that I would be able to live forever through transhumanism. Like, I, I, I believe that stuff. But I, I was wrong, right? Me and PPP debated many ideas, and I realized that my Luciferian outlook, once again, not that I identified it as Luciferian, but looking back on it, it was the Luciferian mindset. I realized that I was wrong and that Christianity is the, um, is the truth. And um, PPP converted me. I started going to church, and uh, eventually PPP baptized me. Um, now, later on, in our, um, a as we worked at Nordia, I, um, we eventually moved in with two other guys from the workplace, um, an older guy who is like this fucking like pole tarred fucking conspiracy theorist, right? He just fucking sort of jokes. And uh, we also moved in with this black guy, <laughs> you know, this me, Ashton, this fucking pole, this like 35 year old pole tarred and this fucking black guy. And like, this black guy kept like leaving the house through the window. And we thought at one point he was a cop. He was trying to entrap us. So, like, the one night we, like, fucking had to sit down with him and fucking grilled him about whether he was a cop. And we used to run poker tournaments and whatnot from the fucking Bethune house, right? It was a great time. It only lasted, like, six months, but it was a great time. Um, and then, um, eventually... Um, so, because I come from knocking doors, and there is a lot of money in that if you do well... Um, like the now guys explain that. Scam explain what it was. There. No, wait. Explain what it is you guys did. You, you mentioned knocking doors. Like, explain. Explain what you mean. Yeah, so let me keep my cigar going. That's right. You know, I get ranting in my fucking. No, I, I know how it goes. If you don't hit it, it'll go out. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I had a piece of a cigar here from the other night, and it got lit on fire. So I'm like putting that out now at the same time. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's just like when I work, right? So I do telemarketing, right? So I fucking, I, I get a cup of coffee and I get ranting to fucking customers and I, uh, my coffee goes cold as I'm fucking ranting. So most of the coffee I drink is fucking lukewarm or cold because I just get fucking ranting to people. You know, you know, Ralph, I had a guy on the phone the other day and his name was Richard Seaman. Really? Did you make a <laughs> joke about it? No, I, I first looked at it and I said, okay, I'm not yeah. pronouncing this as Seaman. So his I'm name is Dick Seaman. Then. No, wait, wait. It's, so I, it's Dick Seaman then Richard. You know, yeah. No, I realized that after I said it. Yeah. I said, yeah, I'm looking for a Richard Seaman. <laughs> a Richard Seaman. He said, yep, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> I realized it was Dick <laughs> That's oh, pretty fuck. But anyway, so I... Um, So I come from knocking doors, like door-to-door -door sales. I sold energy contracts for like a year and a half, and I sold water filters for like six months before I ever met PPP. Now, I worked for a reputable company in this time, right? So like when I, uh, when I, did, when I sold energy contracts, I was like 20 years, 20 years old, and I was making about $1,500 a week, right? So I, I, was, I thought I was doing very well. And I was very comfortable and I was right into it. When I started selling water filters, I never got as good at it. I only ever made like $400, $600 a week. So I started to live on credit, although I, um, it, with the hope that I would get back to where I was, but I, right. I just never got as good at selling water filters as I did with uh, selling the energy contracts. But, um, but anyways, so what, this is before I ever met PPP. Once I uh, met PBP and we were living at this uh, this Bethune house for a while, um, we started selling weed for a while. This is when weed was still illegal in Canada. I um, as soon as weed became legal, I instantly fucking quit. 
because there's a reason the fucking government's pushing it on us. So you were a smoker before then, and then you're like... Oh, yeah. yeah. But it sets my schizo alarms off, you know. I get my fucking schizo alarms <laughs> fucking going. But, um, so, this when I started knocking doors, my boss... His so what the office I first joined for energy contracts, my boss was like the regional guy, and then there was also a guy named Jamie who read a who led a commercial team, and um, my boss quickly replaced him, and this guy got fired, Jamie, right? So Jamie um, started running a because uh, there's a lot of fucking like more so scam companies out there that what they do is they sell a third party filter and they like start their own company with it. Right. And right. they'll uh, like, if you can sell those contracts, uh, you scam a customer, you sell them on like a fucking water filter for like $90 a month for 15 years, telling them they're going to fucking save money and sign here. Right. And uh, you make like a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a fucking deal on that. So guys that do that and do well on it, it's completely fucking shady, and they're doing something that's wrong, but they can make fucking bank. Like, I, I knocked with guys that are making 10, 20 grand a week. Damn. Um, selling fucking rental contracts, right? Um, so we, um, we, we got hooked up with Jamie. Uh, Jamie reached out to me, and uh, me and PPP and, like, the pole tired roommate went to his fucking house, and we were drinking with him. You know, he recruited us. Me and PBP sort of flaked on that because it was fucking shady, right? Like, I just couldn't bring myself to do that. Like, you're scamming fucking customers doing that shit, right? Yeah. Um, I needed to sell something that was reputable. I, uh, I, I just can't bring myself Something you could, to like, be a that. little bit, you know, you could sleep at night, basically. <laughs> Where you knew you weren't fucking people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you don't want to make 10 grand a week and just yeah. realize. You're fucking everyone over. Well, it's right? one thing to be a salesman and know, you know, you're, you're making money, right? There's a reason you're a salesman. Uh, and then versus, oh, I'm selling, you know, some bullshit, <laughs> right? Like, uh, but anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So Chris, Chris went out to like Winnipeg for a couple weeks, our other roommate, and uh, sort of like that, he sort of got fucking burnt by that. But uh, so me and PBP, like um, maybe a month later, my old boss, um, asked me how I was doing and told me that he wanted me to bring, he was starting up the, uh, cause our office was in Kitchener, right? And he was starting up the Etobicoke office in uh, Etobicoke, which is like Toronto. You probably don't really know Canada that well. It's uh, Toronto is fucking, Etobicoke is region of Toronto, okay. basically. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, so um, he wanted us to join that. So he came down and he, he fucking played in a poker tournament with us, right? Because he fucking liked poker. And he basically handed us like a grand on the poker table, right? To try to fucking recruit us. So me and PBP were juiced. Our other roommate wasn't really in on it. So um, me and PBP, uh, we hopped on board with that. Now we knocked for about a week. And then um, we came back. And uh, rent came due. And the pole tired roommate didn't have the money to pay rent. And I told him he needed to get a payday loan or something like that. Like he needed to be, a, I, I, I told him he needed to be a man and figure it out. <laughs> and he got fucking rattled. So that fucking night, him and his black friend came over and they tried to fucking work us in poker to make the rent money on poker. <laughs> but, but we fucking won. <laughs> They got even further behind. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they got rattled. And then we were watching UFC. And uh, PPP said, because black guy, whoever, I don't even remember the fight, but the black guy got knocked out. And uh, it was like two black guys fighting. But PPP goes, that nigga just got knocked out. And fucking Buddy's black friend tried to be a hero and said, you can't say that. Yeah. You can't say that word. Right. So I, I just thought, I'm in the kitchen cooking. And I thought to myself, I said, this guy's going to come into our fucking home and try to police our fucking speech in our home. So I walked into the living room and I said, <laughs> no, I don't want to drop the hard R's. No, no, right. no. no, 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 no. <laughs> but I dropped three hard R's in a <laughs> row. I said, nigga, nigga, nigga. <laughs> 
<laughs> so he tried to fucking fight me. PBP ended up fucking like knocking him out. Um, and then, uh, so th that all fell apart. That whole household fell apart, right? Me and PVP from there on moved out and went right to Etobicoke and started knocking doors. Now, PVP sucked at fucking knocking doors. So like, that's when at some point, like our boss was paying for our hotels and everything. And then, uh, at some point fucking like we were living out of the fucking van. Right. And it was just fucking rough. So I won the Columbia trip. I went down to Columbia and just railed fucking lines for like a week in Columbia, <laughs> you know, as a result of that. But then I moved back to Peterborough. I fucking got a job uh, selling lights. And then we moved into this place. Uh, we lived here for like eight months. Me and PVP got in a fight. He moved in with his brother. And that's when he started streaming. All right. And the rest fucking history eventually he moved back in here and that's when the first cooking with surfer came to be okay so wait okay so okay so i didn't know so you guys lived there got into a fight that we didn't before he was a stream before we knew of you guys he moved yep. out then went to his brothers came back the streaming stuff happened then of course y'all got in a fight again he left he's back over there now is that is that right am i telling it right Yeah, let me keep my cigar going. Okay. No, that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, it sucks when they go out. You got to get the... It's a Royal cigar. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. A good cigar, yeah, you got to keep that lit because relighting it doesn't taste the same. Yeah. Got to keep her poofing. Got to yeah. keep her puffing. You got to keep it going. Big text. <laughs> yeah. Big text back in here. I had my whole intro lined up. I was going to say... <laughs> We're surfing. <laughs> We're surfing now in the surfing. Of We're hitting the I was also, buddy said you were jittering. I was also going to come on and say that I'm jittering also. <laughs> I, got, I got a big guy. Oh, he mentioned. No, he mentioned to get some beers or something, or he'd had a few drinks or something uh, waiting on the show. And I was like, yeah, I almost, I almost got some, but I'm just having some coffee. Uh, so no, no, I wasn't jittering. I wasn't pulling the Mr. Dead man, but once he mentioned that, I was thinking, oh, okay. Uh, it did make me think about it for sure. Uh, D big tech. Are you here? I'm here, bro. What's up, bro. I've been enjoying listening to this story. That was pretty fun hearing you talk about how you used to be like of a Luciferian mindset and then realize there were problems came around, even got baptized and realizing that, uh, I just really like to hear that story. You kind of put me in a good mood. I was in a little bit of a, I was in a sad mood, but then just listening to you talk, surfer, I like your energy. You put me in a good mood. So I appreciate well, it. I appreciate that, bro. I do appreciate that. I try to keep a positive vibe. You know, I think of myself as an eternal optimist, like the motivational speakers say, you know, like Tony so, Robbins, <laughs> you, know. you know, I said that about you before that, um, and, and, um, I, I was being serious. Like it was like surfers are really positive guy. Like he was talking to me like, okay, Ralph, it's time to lose some weight. Let's do this weight loss contest. And I'd already been thinking about it, but just like, okay, you know, you're doing good. And especially early on when you get started on something like that, cause you're like, uh, it's easier just to keep doing what you're doing. Um, and that's another thing, especially cause once I started talking about it, I was publicly, I was like, okay, I want to, commit to it but that's kind of in short supply <laughs> that kind of that's kind of in short supply online big tech um positive bust positivity legitimately well, i was planning no. on letting myself be a little negative tonight i was gonna dive into the darkness and just be stone cold for the evening and just let myself feel some things that i wanted to feel but you, then i started listening to your story and you put me in you a heard about positive. the it's made me start feeling all good cold. again damn it stone cold wig that gavin mickey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> laying the smack down right yeah i uh you, know, there... you ever do that you ever just go you just go yeah. dark for a little bit well, there is some other yeah, news here. tonight that we could talk about at some point, possibly. I've, of course, been following that, uh, too, um, uh, a little bit uh, there with the ex-treasurer. 
uh, situation. I might uh, talk about that later. But that was not the reason for the show, so that's why I haven't really uh, yeah. went there. Yeah, I mean, we'll have plenty of time to talk about that. Um, yeah, and I, I don't want to tempt you with the beers, Ralph. You know, I, I'm trying to gain weight, so, you know, I got it easy. I can just slam as many beers as I want, and it actually helps me with the calories. <laughs> you know, I got a little bit of Irish in me, so it works out. The beers put on good weight. <laughs> All right, now, okay, now let's take it. So I'll tell you when I first heard about PPP. Um, I guess somebody had posted this video. I think it was on Cal, the Cal board or something. And they had posted this video, and it was this unhinged guy, really autistic. I mean, I, I say unhinged. I don't know. He was just kind of goofy, really, kind of silly, over-the-top criticisms of Sargon. And um, the liberalists and stuff. And we played his videos on the kill stream because we thought it was funny. Uh, and we played it. We played him for a minute. Like, we kind of made him a little bit of a thing on the show there for a minute. Uh, and then I guess this was fall 2018. And then that New Year's Eve, um, I don't know. He, he was doing a stream, and it was there at that place. And uh, he was talking shit about me. He was talking shit about others. I don't really remember why he was talking shit about me. Maybe I hadn't had him on the show or something. I don't know. Um, and he, it was. I think you were there with him. Um, I don't know who all was there, but uh, he got really, really drunk on air, and he bent over. Pull, no, his... I wasn't there, bro. I wasn't there. You weren't there. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. I haven't even seen that whole stream. Of course, I've seen the picture. Okay, okay. All right. I don't want to put you. I don't want to give you. I don't want to put you in it then, if you weren't there. But um, there was somebody there. Um, anyway, he pulled Probably his. Probably his Jew brother. Yeah, he pulled his pants down, pulled his asshole, pulled his ass cheeks apart, exposed his asshole um, to the world there on air. Um, and said a few words. I don't remember the words, but, uh, um, so that was really how I really, you know, we were all watching that live on streaming and then we did the kill stream. Of course we talked about it a lot. Uh, and then there was something with Kraut where Kraut got exposed and we ended up giving PPP credit for exposing them, even though he didn't do anything. We just said that cause we thought it was funny cause he was known as like the retard basically. Um, so we just said that PPP did that like as a joke. Uh, and we brought him on the show and then it was clear he didn't do it or whatever. Uh, and he said, I think he said something to me or something that I didn't like or whatever. And I was like, fuck this guy. And I threw him. <laughs> I don't remember exactly, but there was some kind of friction and I, I was just like, oh, whatever. Uh, and I threw him off yeah. the air. You know what I mean? And that's kind of how, you know, that's just how I, I am. That. Yeah, right? And it was towards the end. He was on this yeah. show, like, as a friendly caller. And then he started getting a little chirpy or whatever and getting some jokes in or whatever. But they weren't jokes, you know what I mean? Like, they, I mean, they were, but oh, they were I like. Think, I think you made a joke about him this morning. Yeah. And, stuff, and then he started calling you. Yeah. 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 See, like that, right. Exactly. It was a little. Laughing. Yeah, exactly. I think you're right. I think you might be right. Um, but it was, it was, I just remember it being cool and then it was testy. And then I was like, well, fuck this guy. This is the guy who spread his ass. So I don't care about this guy anyway. Um, and so I kind of just stopped paying attention for the most part. Um, but he took it, he like diverted onto a new arc, uh, as just like the insane, uh, Ralph critic basically, um, and just preaching from his, his house every day. Uh, oh, he's just, had a searing resentment in his heart for you ever since like off yeah. camera Ralph, like he's told me he literally does want to rape you to death in the middle of the desert. Right. Like, like he has a searing fucking hatred yeah. where he wants to like rape you. Right. Like, well, see, it reminds me of a lot of, I've talked about this before because I talk a lot of shit online and always have, but it was just some guy, right? I, I didn't think about it after, you know what I mean? I was just like, oh, fuck this guy, whatever. And just went on. But for them, for the person on the other side of that, it's like this in life too, I guess. Uh, you don't think about it though, but the other person, it's like their origin story. You know what I mean? Like it's their, okay, I'm going to fucking get this guy now. And they never forget it. I've had people swear vendettas over being blocked on Twitter or fucking, you know what I mean? Like just 
now it's fuck this guy. Uh, and I don't know. It's crazy to me. And yeah, that is, I see chat picked up on the rape me to death in the desert. That is kind of gay. You know, <laughs> I see some people in chat saying gay. Yeah, it's pretty gay, I'd say. Um, but okay. So again, he embarked on a new path. Now the part of the origin story for that path was that I called his church about the starfish story where he spread his ass open on air and got him kicked out of his church. Now this did not happen. I did not call his church. I did not call his family at all. We did make fun of him spreading his asshole on air. We did have him on air and have that back and forth, but I didn't call his church. I don't know even where he came up with that. If that was just an idea to like that he knew would like be catchy or what, but uh, I, I don't know the whole background of that. No, I can attest to that. Um, so PVP to give you the background lore on that, and I'm not going to say which member of his family started the church, but the local church, a member of his family started out of respect for that man, because that man is actually a great man that's related to PPP that started the church. And I have a lot of respect for that man. So I'm not going to sure. say who it is in particular, but he started the church. Now, other members of the church eventually got into conflict with this man. And um, that conflict, they eventually kicked him out of the church. Um, PVP was still a member of the church. And when PVP was like 15, 16, he started to preach and started to lead um, like Bible studies and things like that. So that's one of the reasons why PVP is effective, why he's very good at what he does is because like from 15, 16, he was leading a congregation. Um, he was preaching. And he comes from a wrestling background. I notice a lot of yeah. people in the sphere love fucking wrestling. Not me, but you, you, Ralph, you and PBP are very similar in that regard. You guys both just fucking get off to the wrestling. Yeah, I noticed that um, as well. I noticed that as well. We do have that in common. He used the term work to shoot the other day, uh, and I did smile because it sounded like something that I would say, uh, yeah, actually, oh, on you air. You and PBP are way more similar than our fucking difference, you know? He said that on air, yeah. and I was like, uh, anyway, we went. In, I went into it on air, and I was like, that did sound, that was like a Ralphism there, uh, basically. But, yeah, we do we do share a, a passion for for professional wrestling. That's his one uh, redeeming quality. Uh, but uh, <laughs> anyway, so the church thing, um, he started running with that, I guess. And then just basically, I guess, doing the, a, a shtick every day where he would just pick up whatever was being said about me. Yeah. Well, to give you the whole story with the church, like PVP, sure. ever since the church excommunicated his family member that started the church, like PVP's had a resentment in his heart. Like he has a resentment for you or like he has a resentment for the, uh, the college staff that kicked him out of college. Right. Like PVP holds these resentments and he doesn't get over them. Um, so he always had that resentment for the other members of the church, even though he still attended. Um, now PVP left the church when he moved out from here, me and PVP have had three fights. So the first fight was way before he ever streamed. Um, that was when he first moved out and then he, he did his first few streams when he moved out. Um, when he moved like maybe eight months, a year later, he, uh, moved back in his brother fucking moved in with a couple people and PVP had nowhere to stay. So he reached out to me. He said, you know what, RJ, we are really good friends. And I said, yeah, bro, until you get on your feet, come stay on my couch. Um, and then he came to stay on my couch and I fucking loved the guy, you know? So I, uh, once, once he stayed on the couch for a month, I wasn't just going to kick him out. You know, I liked having him around. So he just fucking like, then we started streaming together and everything. But our second fight was actually like, um, maybe two weeks before our fight on air. Um, that was when he fucking rabbit punched me in the back of the head, you know, and he was really trying to fucking hurt me. And when he moved back in, I told him, I said, you can't threaten to fight me again. I'll let you move back in and keep staying on the couch, but you can't threaten to fight me again. If you try to fight me again, you're fucking gone, and I'll call the cops. And we agreed to that. 
Um, and then that's what happened that night up. So he knew that that's what was going to happen. And that's exactly what I did. Right. Um, well, he tried to portray it as you were saying that that's fucking like, Oh, yeah. surfer did this and that, because that was the agreed upon thing when I let him move back in after that second fight, right. Leading up to the third. But so anyways, that's sort of off the topic of the church thing. Um, when he moved back in after he started streaming, he was with his brother and he moved back in and let him stay on the couch. Um, I tried to get him to go back to the church because that whole time I was still going to the church, right? Um, and he fucking resisted. He wouldn't go back. He said, no, they're fucked, RJ. I'm not going back. So I said, just give it a chance. You guys can reconcile things. And I brought him into the church to reconcile things because um, he left on his own accord the first time when he blamed you for calling the church, right? Like he completely left on his own accord because of fucking personal beefs, the f familial issues from before with these people. But we moved back in. And actually, you do have something to do with the reason why why he left the second time, but it wasn't your direct action. So we went to the church for a while, and we went to a Wednesday Bible study, and we went to church every Sunday there. The problem with the local church is there's a woman there that is very involved. Women shouldn't have really a say in the church. Women are supposed to be silent in the church is what it says in the New Testament. But there's a woman there that thinks she's a fucking hero and can run the fucking church, right? And her husband is like the major donor to the church that pays the fucking bills. So it's hard to really fucking battle with. But um, so <laughs> we, we went back to the church for a long while. And then one day PPP caught a fucking video on you. And fucking this woman saw it. Oh. And we went into fucking, we went into the church that Sunday and she just had this fucking dirty look on her face for the first like hour. Fuck, because on Sunday we do Bible study and then we do an hour service, right? Bible study, intermission, hour service. And uh, after the Bible study, like the whole time she had this dirty look on her face. And then in the fucking intermission, she just brought up, she just starts to grill fucking PPP about bullying Ethan Ralph. <laughs> Holy shit. So, so, PPP said no. Like, this is retarded. I'm not going to listen to you tell me about bullying Ethan Ralph. I'm like, I told her to repent and uh, that women should be speaking in the church. And we walked out, and that was the last time either of us have ever been to the church, right? She sounds nice. I like so her. Like, you, you never called. You never called the church or anything like that. PBP left on his own accord because of familial issues that I won't really get into out of respect for the other member of his family because the other member of his family is a great man and a great preacher. Um, but... Um, but the second time, it was because of a video that they saw. And, and this woman tries to grill us on bullying Keith and Ralph. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. By the way, um, so you mentioned, but uh, also let me let me switch over here. Big Tech, are you still here, Big Tech? Yeah, buddy, I'm here. That Big was a tech. good story. Super bass surfer. Way to go. You told her to shut up. <laughs> I like that. Well, it says it says explicitly in the Bible that when women speak in the church, it's fucking shameful, and there's a reason for that. It's not to disparage women or anything like that, but women and men have very different fucking roles in society. Um, women are like the glue that holds society together and are a very important piece of society for that. But because of that, women women value social cohesion more than they value truth and justice, whereas men value truth and justice more than social cohesion, which is why men are meant to be the leaders in the church and things like that and why it goes God, Jesus, man, woman. Um, it's not to disparage w women, but women shouldn't be speaking in the church. It says that it's, it says in the, um, I think second Corinthians, maybe first Corinthians, that it's a, uh, it's shameful for a woman to be speaking in the church. And, um, it says the same thing in, uh, first Timothy or whatever, right? It's very explicit. And like, I talk to that, I, I, I bring that point up to my grandparents and they tell me I'm wrong because we progressed past that like this idea of progressivism that somehow modern human morality trumps the morality of god well no sorry human morality will never trump the morality of god god's morality comes first the human mind is incapable of understanding the grand majesty of the universe or the grand majesty of god 
Um, God's morality comes first, and that's why that's absolutely fucking silly. <laughs> you know? Now, real. True and real. Now, what about the autism bucks? Did he use... <laughs> what about the autism bucks? The tism bucks. bucks. The tism bucks. <laughs> What do you know about the Tism Bucks that uh, Ashley received from the Canadian government? Well, you know, me and PVP were working a lot of times. Um, there was a stint where uh, where I was working and PVP was collecting disability because of his autism. So here in here in Canada, there's the welfare system. So if I was to go on welfare per se. Welfare would give me like $750 a month. But if you have a disability, um, you'll get like $1,300, $1,400 a month, right? Um, so PVP, because he's like diagnosed with autism, um, he can get disability. Um, so there was a stint where he was on that. I mean, the majority of the time I knew the guy, he wasn't on that. We were working. Uh, when we first moved in here, I think he was on that. But then we got him another job and... Um, we had that. Eventually, the time came, like around when the time when Godwinson came over. Um, PV, no, PVP worked still then. PVP worked in security for a little while as like a security guard. Yeah. But um, when CERB came out, when the fucking like Canadian recovery benefit for COVID came out and they gave you two grand a month just to do nothing, I told PVP, yeah, go ahead, just collect CERB and make your videos. Because I always saw a lot of potential in PPP. Like, when we worked at the call center, everyone at the call center looked at PPP like he was a joke, right? Like he was an infantile fucking joke. But I always saw a lot of potential in the guy. And you can see that potential come to fruition. And without me, that potential wouldn't have come to fruition. But I always saw that in him. So when he had the opportunity to collect CERB and still pay me the fucking $400 a month for groceries and stay on my couch, I said, yeah, buddy, do that. Work on your videos because you can make something of yourself with it. And um, I, saw, I, I took care of the guy while he did that. Um, and he collected CERB, but everyone collected CERB. Like, I fucking collected CERB. I was still working and I collected CERB, right? I worked a part-time job and collected fucking CERB at the same time. Because how it worked was where um, if you weren't working, if you're fired for COVID or whatever, you could take it. Um, but also if you made 50%, like less than 50% of what you made in the previous one of the two previous tax years, you could also collect it. So because I, um, like I had two jobs at one point, and because I wouldn't wear the mask, I got fired from the one. Um, I didn't get fired, but, like, I got let go, and it was because I was I wouldn't wear the fucking mask. Um, but I, uh, because of that, I made less than 50%. So I was working part-time and making fucking CERB and doing fucking well financially as a result. And PPP just collected CERB. Now, the reality is, since PPP's moved out of here, I, I don't know what he's done financially, but he, he almost certainly hasn't gotten another job. So yeah, I was going to ask about that. Now, what about the what about the e-girls at this time? Was he was he starting to dabble at this point, or, like, what was going on with that? Yeah, so the first e-girl was the Irish tranny, right? Like, you know of the Irish tranny, I'm Now, let's sure. go into the background. Now, this was, we watched the clip with you and Gahul the other day, and you were talking about it. The Irish tranny. Now, the way you talked about it on this clip, it was, you know, 50-50 whether he was actually going to go be with this Irish tranny, which is a dude. <laughs> Well, no, in all fairness, it wasn't actually a dude, but there was a cow post, I think. They just look like a tranny. Now, are you, okay, so God. so <laughs> it's not a literal God. tranny. Where he posted this all picture right. of this fat tranny and said that this was the Irish tranny. You right? know what, I'll this give you credit because I even, I even told him, I told him before the show, I was like, don't, he could have just ran with that and I definitely would have ran with it. I would have continued to run with it and you, and you stopped me. So, okay. I'll give you credit. You I told him not to, I was like, don't put it. I said, manager. don't put any razzle dazzle on it. I said, I just want the straight truth. If you would have continued to say tranny, I was about to just run with that for the rest of my life. All right. Fair <laughs> no, enough. Fair I enough. Be truthful, bro. All right. My that's fair. Sales manager. One day he brought me into the office. 
him and my fucking coordinator, my crew coordinator, they brought me into the office. And that, that was their criticism to me. They said, you know what, RJ? Your problem is you're way too honest. <laughs> now I told him, I told him to be honest. All right. So the bitch just looks like a tranny, I guess. Uh, but what, uh, I, I guess what was going on there? How did he get in with that? that uh, so at some lady? point, maybe like six months before he moved out, um, PVP like put up, said that w like he, he put up for women to send him wife applications or something like that. So the first one came from the fucking Irish tranny. Um, who wasn't actually a tranny, but she was from Ireland. She was Irish and PVP really liked her. Right. Um, uh, but like a, um, like a couple months later, the Louisiana succubus also oh, sent no. a fucking wife application and she's the one that's affiliated with the order of the nine angles right like the satanist group she's in louisiana in fact i know her address and if she has anything to do with the fucking swatting i know this bitch's fucking whole address you know it's it's one that's like stuck in my memory because she has one of those street names <laughs> yeah know? one of those really unique ones yeah. i'm not a vindictive bastard but if she has anything to do with that i do know that right um but um, so PVP sort of talked to both of these women for a long time. And then there was the New Year's stream where PPP muted me because they were both sending them like boxes of like snacks and Pokemon games and stuff like that. And I mentioned that the other one existed. And uh, PBP just instantly muted the fucking stream and said, you can't say that, you know, you just fucking, you know, how to spurg out about it. No. But um, so after that, he was forced to choose between them. And even though he liked the Irish tranny more, the other one knew how to weld and do all these manly things, just like all like the trades things, right, to take care of the house. And PVP has shaky hands, right? Like, he has Velcro shoes because he can't even fucking tie his shoes because he has no fucking hand coordination because of his fucking autism, right? Um, so, you know, I, I sort of reasoned with him. That Is the this so shaky he can't tie that. his shoes? Are you serious? Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. I didn't even know that was a thing, actually. Not even joking. Like, I didn't know that that was... Unless you had, like, fucking Michael J. Fox's disease or whatever. Uh Anyway, sorry. Well, that's what it—that's that, literally what it's like with him with his hands, right? And that's why he's—is that why he's always doing that? Yeah. Games. Yeah. His autistic tick is with the fucking pens, like. He fucking and how he's it. always moving around like this, like I—I I was making fun of him <laughs> yeah. the other day, but he's always like, you know what I mean? Like he can just never just like sit still. Um, he's always like, or when he like really gets into what he's saying, he's like leaning back and rocking like in a rhythm or some shit, you know? Like I don't know, yeah. it's weird. You know what I do? You know what my autistic pay, uh, tick is? What? I fucking pace. Yeah, I you know what? Pace. Getting up and walking, especially when I'm on the... So I'm used to streaming. I consider that different in my mind for some reason. But when I'm on the phone talking, sometimes I like to get up and walk back and forth. Like, I'll just walk around... Like, while I'm talking on the phone. So, yeah, I can understand it for sure. Because I, I get like that when I'm on the phone. <laughs> oh, I'm the same fucking way. Where I'm just know? walking okay. around. Like, there's no reason for it, but I'm just walking around. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll get into... Well, first off, is he still with the uh, Louisiana succubus? I don't know. I don't know. So so what happened with the succubus? Like, I convinced PPP to choose the succubus over the fucking tranny. But I should have known better. Never e-girls. E-girls, not one fucking time. I don't. Um, e-girls are a vile, wicked fucking breed of person that you shouldn't fuck with. And, you know, PPP used to tell me when he was fucking with these e-girls, he said, surfer, like... The fucking e-girls love me. Like, you got to start going after the e-girls. Like, if they're going after me, like, imagine fucking the e-girls you could get, bro. And I always held e-girls not one time. That's the one thing Nick Fuentes is right about. Nick <laughs> Fuentes was very right about that. Now, Nick Fuentes also might be saying never girls. 
Instead, monkey. <laughs> you, know, you know what? I don't even know where that's coming from. I seriously saw. So I didn't watch their stream, but I just saw on Twitter that they're pushing this monkey thing. And I'm like, where is this even coming from? Like, they're like, Nick wants to be with monkeys. And I'm ser I'm like, seriously, is that what they're pushing now? Like, was there some super chat or something where he was joking around? Like, I, I don't even know well, where this they came took from. It out of context. Nick was talking about getting an exotic pet. He was talking about getting a monkey or a shark, right? Getting okay. like a pool with a shark. And I, I was fucking in, in his chat. That sounds awesome. I mean, from his chat, I think he might have. Because I was making dumper jokes, right? I was saying you should get a tiger shark and jump in the pool with the tiger shark and spank it on its dumper. Tiger sharks are cool. Dumper spanking. Yeah, but you don't you don't want to spank know, a tiger shark. I don't wouldn't do that. No, I don't think that. But you know, what, if Nick became like some fucking like evil genius, like Doctor Evil or something, and like had like his lair and he had like a pool with a tiger shark, you know, he could fucking when someone fucking went against just him, throw, he him could, he the, throw them in the pool yeah, and say. bank the tiger shark on its dumper. I was thinking about just let the tiger shark just feed him to the sharks, literally. Um, but, uh, fuck, I forgot. What were we just talking about right before that? Damn it. There was something I was going to ask about. Uh, Probably the succubus. Oh yeah. The succubus. Um, yeah. 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 So the succubus, when we had our second fight, like two weeks before our fight on air, um, so when that happened, that second fight, PVP like went to his brother's trailer for like four days. Right. And he was talking to the succubus on the phone every time, like all throughout that time. So when he when he moved back in, the succubus was in his ear that Surfer's a bad guy. Um, Surfer's trying to fuck you, this and that. You know, Surfer's uh, trying to ruin your career and um, all these things, right? Surfer's derailing your shows. Because she wanted at this point, when we had that second fight, she wanted to capitalize on that. It's her opportunity to drive a wedge between us and get him to move down to Louisiana or whatever the fuck, right? Um that coupled with the fucking Kiwi trannies, the fucking tranny farms people saying the same shit was ultimately what caused them to fucking snap at me, right? Because you just started to believe that shit. Um, yeah, I saw that too, where they're like surfers derailing the streams, um, and he always throws them off. Yeah, I saw some of that complaining too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, so... Uh, let's see. I'm thinking about uh, Godwinson too. Now, where does where does he fit into all this? And did, was there some kind of falling out? Like, why isn't Godwinson involved anymore? Oh, Godwinson was uh, of the mindset never e girls. You know, when Godwinson first came back and uh, made Rudy Coleman his like new fucking co-host or whatever the fuck um, before the femboy photos got released. Wait, 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 um, wait, 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 wait. The femboy photos of who? Of Rudy. Oh, I didn't see that. I don't know that whole arc. I don't, I don't know the lore there. Well, Rudy's repentant of that, but Godwinson came back initially on Twitter, right, and um, said he was, like, doing tryouts for a new fucking co-host. And I actually recommended to him Rudy because Rudy's fucking pretty good. Um, but um, but I, I was talking to Godwinson at that point. Godwinson said to me that PVP is a shell of who he used to be, and he just couldn't deal with it anymore. And the last, the last time uh, before that, when Godwinson and PPP had their falling out, it was actually during the uh, the Chagat videos. You know those three Chagat videos that did really well that me and PPP did. Yeah, I didn't see all of them, but I know you guys were hammering on him pretty hard, and he got mad because I brought Chagat on the show and ended up uh, having like a big show with him and Dick Masterson. Of course, Chagat, you know, had a spectacle type situation there, but it was right around <laughs> the same time. Yeah. Well, so we did the first couple videos, right? We did the first like 10 hour stream. And then the next night we did like a seven hour stream. And then you, that like the next night you had fucking Dick versus Shaggy yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I wasn't actually supposed to be part of that stream with, um, analyzing the Dick versus Shaggy thing. Um, Chag um, that was supposed to be Godwinson and PPP. But PvP, like, had a fucking ego blow up at Godwinson. 
Godwinson said something to PPP that PPP thought was fucking egotistical or whatever, and PPP had like a diva spurg about how Godwinson fucking, you know, has too much of a fucking ego, and it was just like a battle of the fucking divas between them. And I said, you know what, guys? Like, it's not worth it. Like, this stream is cut out for you guys. But Godwinson just fucked off right then and there, and I had to do that third stream as well, which worked out. It was a good stream, but it would have been better with PPP and Godwinson doing it instead of being PPP doing that stream. Now, do you think there's some resentment there towards Godwinson? Um, I mean, he kind of put PPP on in a lot of ways uh, when you think about it um, especially early on kind of gave him a little credibility Godwinson already has his base built up for years and years um, PPP Godwinson's fucking hilarious you know I, I, the, I admit that. that yeah Godwinson is funny um, I even I'll say that um, now he said a lot of bullshit about me too but he's funny and he's got a flair for being funny like I mean I just that's you know, how he is yeah right? I just can't help it yeah he's just funny guy like it's just true and even when he honestly uh, I will I'll, and I've said this before I would still watch and I don't watch a lot of the the hate Ralph content but I would still watch some of Godwinson stuff uh, and when he was doing some of the stuff with PPP even if Godwinson was involved because I was like I want to just hear what he's <laughs> like I want to hear what he's saying right I want to hear the story that he's cooked up because his shit's actually funny yeah anyway go ahead when Godwinson does it it's like hyperbolized in a way that you know yeah. it's not true but it's just fucking hilarious you know it's, it's just this hilarious and he has this whole like Godwinson lore and all these characters yeah Things. Yeah, you know, with the English accent and just the words. That's a big he part uses, of it. The way he does it, Godwinson's really fucking. Funny. That's a big part of it too. Um, I grew up being an Anglophile too. I think part of yeah, the accent definitely. Uh, he just has a flair for the delivery uh, and the accent. He he knows how things sound. He, he you know what I mean? Like I don't know how to explain it. Uh, but yeah. but uh, yeah, so they they had the falling out. But I always wondered if there was a little resentment there. What it, you know what he thought about Godwinson, or if that, if that was bubbling for a while or or just kind of happened that night yeah well we never heard from godwinson after that night until ppp was gone i don't know if ppp's been in communication with godwinson since he's left here maybe he has because ppp and godwinson share a lot of similar interest in like cinema right like they'll fucking beat off they'll get on discord calls together and beat off for hours about the latest cinema and like fucking producers and directors and shit about cinema that goes way over my head you know but uh, they always did share that so i wouldn't be surprised if they've been in communication since ppp's left here but the last i talked to godwinson he said to me that ppp ever since the girls has been a shell of the man that he was before and it was sad to see now what about the whole uh anti-grifting uh angle uh that he ran by the way this used to be Medicare's playbook too, but I, I won't go there right now. But uh, the whole oh, super chats are gay. This is evil. I mean, he literally used to get on YouTube and preach uh, yeah. against. I mean, I'm not kidding. Like, I'm seriously preach. No, you're not kidding. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, fiery sermons against this behavior. Now, to me, I always thought it was fake, obviously, and I think I've been proven right. Uh, but. He was he was saying it like he believed it. I mean, I'll give him credit for that. Um, and a lot of people got behind that too. Um, first off, where did that come from? Did he actually believe that? Obviously, now he doesn't practice. He doesn't practice that. But um, what what's the what's the backstory there? Well, you know that's a tough one, Ralph. Um, you know, PVP, one of the first arguments he ever made to me about Christianity was before giving me the hard clothes on how Christianity was the truth. He told me that it's important to keep a Christian culture because people tend, it's the quote that Osama bin Laden said, that when you present a weak horse and a strong horse, people always go towards the strong horse. And that's why Islam is taking over. Um, nature abhors a vacuum, and then if we adopt secularism and go from the Christian culture, well, Islam will take over. So that's why it's important to spread the Christian culture. And I don't know if PVP is really genuine in his Christianity or whether he does it just to keep the culture going, right, and save the culture. Um, I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm conflicted with that. And I think it's the same with the, uh, the grifting thing. I think PPP, because PPP was always the autistic kid that never had a lot of friends in school, right? So PPP grew up on the fucking internet. PPP grew up watching that guy with the glasses and the fucking all that stuff that was before my fucking time. Oh. Oh. I'm fucking going go. with the pen like <laughs> PPP is. You know, I'm reminiscing of PPP going with the fucking pen. The gesticulation there. Go ahead. Yeah, but uh, I don't know because I think back in like 2007, which PVP like built his fucking internet career on going back to 2007, like the Kino Dog May 2007. I think a central tenet of that was against e-bagging and against grifting for the same reason that Medicare said. So I think he did genuinely believe that stuff. Uh, my, I honestly think that he did genuinely believe that stuff. But as soon as uh, Jim started grifting, as soon as Jim started grifting, that sort of soured that for him. And he said, "Well, you know what? If Daddy Jim's gonna grift, <laughs> fuck it." And before he moved out, like for the two months before he moved out, we talked behind the scenes about starting to grift. Um, and then there was the lemon heist and all that sort of thing, right? Like we we took it less seriously. Um, and I never really had a moral stance against it. Like, my sort of stance is that, like, it's not wrong to grift as long as you're using the money for the content and not the content for the money. I think there's a very big difference between those two things. And um, because that, you know, I think if you can use the money for the content, there's nothing wrong with making it your sole profession. Um and I, I, I maybe had that influence on PPP as well. Those are the sort of things I would say to him behind the streams. And he also saw Daddy Jim start to grift. So I think he honestly did believe that as he started. But then, it, like, when Daddy Jim started to grift, that's when things started. Now, what do you think about his stance now? I mean, he doesn't seem to – he seems to be openly pro super. Ch I mean, I am too. I'm, of course, I've never taken another position – yeah, well, I don't, I don't know if it was just a um, like long game he was playing from yeah, the start. That's kind of what I think. <laughs> yeah. All right, like it's like okay, this is what he was using to get over. To use a wrestling term, he was using that to get over. Yeah. Like that was a good gimmick yeah. to get over. Then once he gets over, it's time to get paid, right? Like that's that's how I see it. He paid his dues yeah. with that bullshit gimmick, and now it's time to get paid. Like that's kind of that's kind of how I yeah, see it. Yeah, but no, to be fair to the guy, I think he honestly did take that okay. stance. Especially working with Godwinson, because Godwinson actually does hold true to that stance. Yeah. Now, the difference is, and the thing that me and PVP used to talk about behind camera is, like, Godwinson is a baronet, right? Like, Godwinson is... that is true? A, uh, oh, no, that is true. Godwinson's family has, like, land, like, bought for them by the fucking royal family. Like, Godwinson's family is fucking very well off. Um... Because uh, because his like grandfather was a baronet, and Godwinson it, it doesn't have to work for money as a result of that, right? Because he's an aristocrat. Whereas PVP and me were both fucking poor kids growing up, right? Like PVP doesn't come from money. I don't fucking come from money, and um, there's there's a big difference between that, right? Like Godwinson can hold on to that anti grip position because he doesn't actually need to make an income. He's fucking his family's well off anyways. But, uh, like, it's different when you don't really have the money to fall back on, right? Yeah, well, if you're independently wealthy, I mean, it's easy to have principled positions on, uh, like, not making money, right? Like, uh, okay, yeah, I'm going to take a stand here. Or if somebody else is like, well, i got to pay the rent this month. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. No, you know, that's it, 100%. Yeah, yeah, I completely understand. Now, I always thought that story about him being a baronet or whatever was bullshit. Like, I, I didn't even think that was true, but. No, you know, that's 100% true. That's crazy to me. Um, now, we talked about PPP. Of course, Worski, now he came up there and stayed with you guys, uh, and I played his clip where PPP was clearly setting him up, by the way. If you watch this clip uh, on the DMCA, Worski's drunk out of his mind, basically giving content on himself at his own expense. Now, he doesn't realize that because he's so drunk. Um <laughs> 
PPP clearly well, realizes me it. and Morski probably smoked fucking like 40, 50 poppers that night. PPP said to me, like, this me and him, he said, okay, so for a drink with Morski, get fucked with Morski. Yeah. I'm going to hold off this night for the interview. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, PPP did set him up like yeah, that. Yeah, it was clear. And me and Morski, like, that interview, Ralph, like, we filmed it in our segments. And in between each hour, me and Warski would slam like three more shots of Jagger and like four more fucking poppers out of the bog, right? Like, so like the third hour deep, like we're just fucked. We've slammed like between us like almost two forties of fucking Jagger the whole day, plus tequila. Plus, we're just smoking fucking poppers all day long, right? Oh, fuck. And he just presses them. But, no, that was a fun time when Worski was here, you know? Worski, Worski has no convictions or no morals. Like, the, Worski is the fucking epitome of a parasocial ladder climber. Ladder climber. He's very good at making connections. He's very good at networking, but the guy doesn't actually have any morals. I don't know if that's whether he was stung by the politics or that's how he always was, but that's the way fucking Worski is. He's a fun guy to drink with, but I can't respect his lack of convictions, to be honest. Well, you pretty much described him to a T, <laughs> I would say. Um, and, of course, you know, it's streaming, right? I understand certain ways you have to bend a little bit maybe or do some things or have some people. You know what I mean? Like co and stuff maybe you wouldn't or, or whatever. But, like, Worski just has no, 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 <laughs> like, center whatsoever. Uh, I've talked about it. Worski is also really susceptible to – like whatever's going on right then like he can easily be um shifted on a dime just depending on how things are going that week you know what i mean i've seen him just change up his whole fucking program the time of the show who he's fucking with based on super chats being low from like one show you know what i mean i've seen him just blow everything up uh now uh, you know they're they're doing okay right now uh but uh i, I will say that's one thing i don't know if he even pays attention to anything i say but his un like his, the way he just like zigs and zags sometimes that's probably gonna be what happens again but uh but we'll see. Um, now, have you talked to Worski any? Did he stop fucking with you when when all this stuff when they started up their show? Or now, I know you guys used to be cool. Of course, I used to be cool with them too. But yeah, well, Worski, like after he left here, um, he was fucking like texting me like fucking nonstop about baked Alaska and this sort of thing. But I just never really got back to him. And then eventually, when I got back to him, he stopped getting back to me. Um, PVP, like when we did that final stream, the diddling of the two Andes, um, where me and PVP had our fight at the end, like PVP legitimately had a hate for fucking Warski there. And I told him, like, it's not that big of a deal. And he said, like, no, sir, for like, fuck Warski, this piece of fucking shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was fucking legitimately angry and I had to like reel him back. Now, why was he so <laughs> mad? <laughs> the what? Why was he so mad? I don't know. I think it was because uh, Worski like wasn't getting back to me. I, uh, I, 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 I don't know exactly. Right. Um, you know, my memory doesn't serve me that fucking well. Um, well, Worski had come on the kill stream and kind of denounced him some too. Uh, was kind of trying to have it both ways. Uh, so I don't know if that played into it. Um, now you you mentioned the the fight that you guys had, and you mentioned the rabbit punch earlier. Some people were asking what a rabbit punch is. A rabbit punch is punching somebody in the back of the head, uh, and it usually I guess you meant like unexpectedly too, like he just walked up and punched you in the back of the head. Is that what you meant? Yeah, like, at the point where he had won the fight, and I told him, okay, buddy, you win. Like, let's stop. And he just fucking, like, just hammered me in the back of the fucking head trying to hurt me, right? 
Yeah, like a punitive blow, basically. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 a punitive blow. Was it? You see, the problem is, Ralph, in the fucking apartment, and I was like 170 pounds at the time. Like, I'm like 220 now. Uh, the last weigh-in, I was 217.9, I think, or 217.8. But I was like 170 pounds at the fucking time, and PVP was like fucking 380, right? <laughs> like, So the problem is, like, if we were in, like, an open field fighting, I'd maybe be able to like strike and back off and have way more stamina than him but in the apartment at such close quarters that he could just fucking bull rush me into a corner and I'm fucked yeah that's <laughs> you know, uh and he's got too. a lot of size on you uh so I mean it's not really a fair a fair contest in the first place now that stream we played it on air before um but you start razzing him about his gambling and his smoking of marijuana, I think. Um, something like that. I think it was mainly the gambling, though, right? Um, and he started getting upset. Basically, you were... He was in his full character mode, and you were needling him about his character flaws, like his real life character flaws. And he starts getting pissed uh, at you. Yeah. Uh, and loses his composure basically to the point where he breaks character pretty much turns back uh and and looks at you threatens you on camera basically to whoop, basically threatens to whip your ass on cameras is, is what happens uh and then there's a breakdown you can take it from there so what happened i guess yeah <clears throat> well <laughs> Yeah, let me grab let me grab another beer. No, we're counting. All the right, get another, beer. Let me grab another beer. Get another beer. If you guys want to super chat some questions in powerchat.live slash the Ralph Retort is the way with the TTS. We also have other super chat methods that I'm monitoring if you want to use that. Uh Woos is in the chat. Shout out to Wooza. We're late night here. We'll be back tomorrow night. Big tech, who I think still here. Wooza! Uh, is I'm gonna, still here. Big Tech's still here. He's, he's gonna. Mormon. He's got a. Uh, after, he, after this, after that, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna yeah. have to give out Mormon Shaggy's story on the topic of fucking Mormons. But so the night me and PVP had the fight. You see, the issue was. Like, the conflict between me and PvP on camera and me pressing him and he pressing me back, like, that added to our chemistry. And that's something I was very cognizant of. Me and PvP's chemistry on camera was, like, fucking magic. And, Ralph, like, it's not something you could recreate, like, doing a stream like this where we're in different locations, right? Right, that's true. But because... Because we were in the same room and we were fucking roommates, we were able to establish that fucking chemistry. And the conflict was part of the reason for that chemistry. And we conflict on camera from time to time, and we talk about that off camera, how the people wanted to see that. And if we can use that effectively, that's fucking very good for the fucking chemistry. So we, we fucking do that. Now, the problem was the Louisiana succubus and fucking these Kiwi Farms fucking trannies were in his ear saying I was derailing the show because of these fucking conflicts. But the reality was it added to the fucking chemistry. So, like, that's why I was pressing him. Now, the problem was that night, um, like, I was drinking. Like, I was putting on weight. But as you know, that was, a, like, in prime punt the gun when PVP was fasting for 72 hours. And he was. Like, PVP is a very strong-willed person. That's something that we both have in fucking common. And he was fasting for 72 hours straight refeeding and then fasting for another fucking 72 hours he lost 20 pounds in the first week i think you know like just fucking stupid of course he's put it all back on since but i think he lost like 50 pounds in that first month you can lose a lot of weight especially when you get when you have a lot to lose too uh yeah. that first month if you go hard yeah especially yeah no, but the will on the guy, like, as much as I say about him, like, you do have to give it to him. Like, the will on the guy to do that is fucking something that's... Yeah, but you put it all back on and then some. Uh, yeah, like, you're right. It's a yo-yo fucking yeah. thing. But uh, but the problem was, because he was doing that, he was very irritable. Like we saw with Jesse the Pickle Man yeah. last Friday. He was very irritable because he hadn't smoked weed yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But... Um, 
but he was very irritable because I was drinking. I was very fucking loose. Right. So like, I just kept pressing him about the gambling, about fucking gambling on the bread and circuses. I think he said something. He made a point about how Vito playing video games is bread and circuses. And actually that's a very interesting point because I still have that stream that we analyzed of the kill stream when Andy got fucking BTFO'd by Pedo Vito. Pedo Vito, Vito fucking spanked Andy. And fucking Dick Masterson had to come to his rescue. And um, Andy went on fucking Twisted Mind after that and coped and fucking coped about, oh, I just let him, I just let him beat me oh, around. I remember that. I just, it's I when Vito... Left. Oh, I remember that Vito came in and just absolutely decimated Worski to the point where Worski sounded like he wanted to cry. Like, literally. Yeah. And it was just offhanded, I, too. Vito Worski wouldn't even... saying, I don't want to be part of the blood sports anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm above the e-drama. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the blood sports. And now look at him. Yeah. Now look at him on the Kino Casino. Not but a few months later. I remember that. And Vito just offhandedly just like, he's just like, shut up, you cokehead retard or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like literally just cut him down. And Worski is like really sensitive about that. Of course, he's lying. He never got sober anyway. But whatever. I won't get into that. But oh, um, thanks. Thanks I don't that, know, Ralph. I don't know, yeah, Ralph. I got to say, I think Andy is off the coke. Like, it, it, well, you, you know I, what? I, I don't think so. Honest. That might be my character flaw, but. From me well, and Andy, I think he is legit. Well, look, I don't think so. And second thing, you can't claim sobriety when you're fucking, you know, getting super drunk and fucking smoking a ton I didn't of see weed. Media come through. Was that immediate yet? Maybe if oh, you sorry. were. Sorry, Ralph. I had my thing unmuted. My bad. Oh, uh, maybe if you were just smoking. Um, maybe if you're just smoking weed, but I don't know if you're drinking a ton, smoking weed. I I don't know. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Um, but he is really sensitive about that. Vito just offhandedly cut him down. Um, and, yeah, I remember that now that you mentioned well, it. Well, there is a lot to make fun of Andy for. He has no fucking convictions. He's a faggot with no convictions. He lives with his parents. He can't take care of himself, right? So, like, well, <laughs> don't need to call him a coke head. I don't, I, that's I true. Really you know what? The coke, stuff. you don't even have to bring the coke into it. Um, now, he said, I think, a, a month or two ago he was going to move in with PPP. Uh, I think that would be the beginning of the end there uh, if that happens. Probably not good. Well, after the Pickle Man thing, PPP, if Andy was in the room with him, it would have been exactly the same as when me and PPP fought. PPP would have tried to kick the shit out of Worski at that time, and he would have. It would have been like when you fought Worski, and Worski curled yeah. up in a fucking ball in the corner. Um you know, I, I have no shame in saying that fucking I, I know that interaction. When me and PPP fought, it was like PPP was you and I was fucking Worski. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, I got fucking felted. That's the reality. I have no shame in saying that. But Andy's going to cope and say that that wasn't the case. But that was the case, right? Like Andy curled up in a fucking ball in the corner. No, he literally did. I mean, we have witnesses uh, to that. It was really bizarre. Like, I've never seen a grown man do that, actually. Like, and he literally started, like, yelling. I, it was like, not even a yell. It was like, uh, not a, it's like a, a shriek. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, it was like a girlish, <laughs> it was like a girlish shriek, I swear. You would think I was trying to, t like, take sexual advantage of him. Like, that's how he was, that's how he was acting. And keep in mind, he was across the room. Like, I wasn't, I had just shut the door. He's, like, standing over there. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't even up on him. I don't know. It was really just a bizarre situation there uh, in Miami. Um, yeah, and people might not want to believe that, but I have no, no trouble believing that because I know the interaction. I've had that interaction with PPP. Thankfully, yeah. he didn't take sexual advantage of me. <laughs> <laughs> Now, okay, so yeah, I haven't seen some people in the chat mentioning any. Now, there there have been, of course, we made that joke too about the you guys living together and all that. Now, there was nothing like that, of course, or was there? Sorry, there was what? There was You're not. Nothing. There was no. You, you guys are not gay. I oh guess. no, we're not fucking gay. Okay. Now, PVP's whole family would try to tell him that he was a faggot and gay for living. <laughs> 
be, but like it was a fraternal relationship. And I'm of the belief that like popular society wants to like say that groups between men and fraternal relationships between men is gay because they want to divide and conquer us. But if we all formed in a fucking group and helped each other improve, um, we wouldn't have to deal with the global homo bullshit. But they want to divide and conquer us, so they say we're gay for trying to form groups, right? Okay. Um, now, uh, I forget where I was going to go I, next. I fucking love PPP in a brotherly way, right? And I went out of my way to take care of the fucking guy. Um, there's nothing homosexual about that. I, um... I, I, I'm very proud of what PVP has become. It, a lot of it I disagree with. You know, I think I think it's almost like, it's like the Jewish golem story, right? Like, I've created this fucking golem and lost control of it. But, um, you know, I always saw a lot of potential in the guy, and I always went out of my way to selflessly fucking try to help him improve so he could make something of himself. And now, even though I don't agree with it, he's made something of himself. And I think that's really the uh, the Christian way to go about things. I think that Christ directed us to try to help other people around us and try to help our brethren improve and not expect anything in return as a result of that, right? And uh, that's why I always, like, let PPP sleep on the couch. And sure, I charged him $400 a month, but he was eating more than that in groceries. Ah! But that was just so we could get by. Um, Daily. I never asked for anything in return. Now, as a result, I've got the library. I've got his family library and all the theological texts and everything like that. And I'm very thankful for that. And if he wants them back, um, he can have them back for 20 grand. But um, Seems fair. <laughs> until then, I'm very thankful that I've gotten that benefit. But that wasn't a benefit that I seeked out when I um, like brought the guy in and helped him. That's just sort of, I feel like God works in funny ways like that, that um, when we actually do try to be Christ-like and do these things, like we do get these benefits as a result without looking for them. And we shouldn't necessarily try to help people just for profit. We should try to help people just to help people, right? Now, that was always my outlook. Now, he, you guys are friends in real life, live together. Um, you mentioned the incident uh, we were talking about there where police ended up being called here uh, and you called the police and uh, he tried to portray you and his fans basically try to portray you as a, as a snitch for calling the police on him when, I mean, he had already assaulted you in your own home previously. You were letting him stay there uh, already. You know, it's your place, not his. Uh, and then, you know, he tried to portray you like that. What did, what did you think about that? Well, in two weeks prior after that second fight, when he moved back in, we talked about it. And I said to him, you know, I'll let you move back in, but you can't try to fight me again. If you do, this is how I'm going to handle it. I'm just going to call the police, and you're going to be gone. And uh, he agreed to that. Uh, that was the stipulation of him moving back in. And that's what happened when that third fight happened on camera, right? So I, I, I just did exactly what the stipulation was. I... um. I said to the police specifically, I don't want to press charges or anything like that. I don't want him to have legal consequences. I just, I just want him gone, right? Okay. And uh, I think you can hear that on the yeah. video. Yeah. Um, um, now let's show the swatting footage. Speaking of police, uh, now yeah, you got yeah. you got swatted when you were going to come on the Super Show. Um, yeah. And you know, well, we'll and, talk about it first. And hold on, to intro it, Ralph. Before you, wow, this it. is Canada. They're really coming in. This is big time for Canada. Anyway, go ahead. Well, to intro it, there's two popular theories. Um, one, because Cliff Wallace reached out to me. Um, I, I'm Cliff Wallace. I guess he had a communication with you at some point on Discord. Yeah, he messaged me before. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. But yeah. uh, so he reached out to me a couple of days before. So I guess he lost communication with you since, like, you want to count this band or whatever, right? Yeah. He reached out to me a couple of days before and said, Do you have a direct line of communication with the Gunt? Were his exact words. <laughs> and uh, I said, I never got back to him. In fact, I meant to get back to him and said, Yeah, I'll be going on the kill stream on, uh, on Friday or whatever. But, I, you know, I never got around to it. I'm a busy fucking guy, and I can't be bothered to get back to fucking Cliff Wallace. Um, he thought that because he was making fun of DJ Axel, Phantom Organization, which I'm sure you also know who that is. Yeah. 
Um, he thought that it was because he made fun of him and because I'm fucking bros with fucking Axel. <laughs> I, I think Axel's funny. I don't disagree. I, I don't agree with Axel's character. I think his character is sort of fucked, but I think he's a funny guy. And I don't think his character is serious. I think if you look into Axel's lore, like, you know, Mr. Bond, like the rapper, Mr. Bond. Yes. So Axel actually, before he was ever like doing streams or anything, he was a member of the Purity Spiral community, like the Purity Spiral website. And he interacted with Mr. Bond all the time. They were like buddies online. And Axel was like a, like a right wing guy, you know, like a, uh, one of these neo-Nazis and all that sort of thing. And, um, I think Axel got sort of soured as these people started to be persecuted by the law and this and that. And I think that Axel's character nowadays is just because of the idea that like, like popular society, this fucking liberal hellhole we live in, views racism as something worse than pedophilia, um, which is absolutely fucked. So I think Axel plays is, is the character he plays as a commentary on that. Um, I could be wrong, and in which case I'm wrong, Axel's fucked. Or tough <laughs> but I don't think Axel's character is serious. I think it's simply a commentary on that because he's been soured once he saw people like Mr. Bond be persecuted. Like, Mr. Bond's in jail for 10 years now, yeah, right? Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Um, so Cliff thought that because fucking, oh, Surfer's fucking been on Axel's stream and I was making fun of Axel, um... You know, that's why he's not responding to me. Um, so, Axel, the next thing, um, Cliff reached out to me at 11.42 in the morning of the swatting. And I was swatted at, like, 7, 8 p.m. when I was supposed to come on to your show, right? Yeah. And Cliff said that the person doing the swattings is, relate, is from 09A. They're related to snacks, and PVP's in on it. Um, I, think that, I think that Cliff wanted me to come on your show. That's why he asked me if I had a direct line of communication to you so that I could tell you that that was the case. I think most likely whoever's doing all these swattings, like not just of me and you, but of AF and everything, is someone related to Cliff, some third party that's trying to stir the pot, right, and create drama and blame it on PPP and snacks and this and that. And that's why also when you were swatted during the, uh, when you were watching the Gunspiracy, about snacks. It was there in the middle of that, yeah. They swatted you to make you think that. Now, maybe that's just my schizo alarms, and maybe it is actually someone to do with PPP and the order. Well, you know, you know what I think? Um, it could be that for sure, and that's, you know, normally it is a third party trying to stir shit, especially when it's, like, widespread like this. Although, I don't know. The the way he knew about it, like, I, even if he knew about it, I wouldn't think he would be doing it directly. Maybe he just well, heard that it had happened, right? From these circles or, or whatever, like that was kind of my working theory that maybe he had heard about it or whatever. The but. reason why I think it's someone related to Cliff is because he literally messaged me seven hours prior. And um, when I never got back to him, he probably panicked and said, you know what, I'm just going to swat Surfer. <laughs> Watt Surfer, and then Surfer is going to tell Ethan Ralph this and stir the fucking pot. Um, when I when I asked Cliff about that, when I said that fucking, like, why did you message me that seven hours before I swatted? That's that's sort of a coincidence. He started calling me a faggot and a nigger and a retard. Don't. And this and that. that was his quote, by the way. You were quoting someone else. So I'll I'll say. Um, be a little careful though. Uh, I see a super chat Bro, on. Oh, Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. Spank my dumper. I know, I know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, I see. You a, know what? You know what, Ralph? Yeah. Maybe we should try to get Surfer on Cozy. Cozy TV slash Surfer. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Like. I don't really, like, I'm not saying that to pump my tires and to boost my own career. Really, since I've hit a 1,000 subscribers, I've hit all my fucking goals. My only goal is streaming. I wanted to hit a 1,000 subscribers so I could stream from my phone. I don't really care how much bigger I get from that. But I think if I got on Cozy, that would really fucking, <laughs> that would really fucking rattle fucking PPP and Andy, to be honest, which is why I say that. <laughs> Cozy.tv slash surfer. Uh, I th Cozy has people on it like Book Cat. <laughs> you know, like, who the fuck is Book Cat? Book Cat's base, man. You need to check out. I like Book Cat, actually. 
I thought I about getting him. I don't know who that in. is. I saw that yesterday. I just I was watching Cozy yesterday. Yeah. I saw a buck cat had like twice the viewers in Baked Alaska. And I thought, fuck, that must be tough for Tim. That someone named Book Cat. Book Cat is <laughs> base, man. I'm telling you. Uh, well, maybe that's it. Yeah. All right, we love Book Cat. See, I see people in chat. See, Book Cat's popular. But no, put the word in for Nick for me, if you will. I'll though. put the word in. You know, I think, I think that would fucking <laughs> rattle PPP and Morris. Now, what, uh, but look, now, first off, I have this footage up, though, and I've showed it a little bit already. Uh, but this is like full scale. I mean, they're letting the dogs in. Now, this is across the way. Is this you filming this and they gave the wrong address? No, this is my neighbor. Oh, really? I wasn't so they old, sent this right? dog into your and house. And oh, hold on, pause it. Sure. If this isn't proof of divine intervention, I get my groceries delivered, right? Like, I don't leave the house other than Friday night for Bible study. Remember I told you I'd be at Bible study before yeah. I could call in the show? The only time I leave the house all week is for Bible study. And when I get swatted, I'm gone at Bible study. Now, did you, do you, first off, do you still go to the same church or did you change churches? No, this is a Bible study I do with my family. So on okay. Christmas, because I, I collect, I collect Bibles, right? I collect old Bibles. Really? So I have, Two Bibles that are like uh, from like the 1800s, um, really nice fucking Bibles. And I gave one to my grandparents for Christmas and said that I want to start doing Bible study with them and my uh, and my mother, um, because my grandparents go to like uh, like mainstream Christianity, like Christian Zionist church, and they're very deluded by their church in a lot of ways. So I figured we'd have a Bible study and uh, seek truth in Christ together, right? So I uh, I don't actually attend a church right now. I try. I'm not a like I'm not a member of any specific right. church. I try to go to different churches and network with different Christians. Um, but other than that, like the only thing I habitually do is I do my Bible study on YouTube on Sundays with three four. I was doing that with the Simp Show, but he vanished for a while. So I'm doing that with a guy from New Zealand named 3-4 now. And I do my Bible study on Friday with uh, my family. So that's a family Bible study that I do with my okay. grandparents and my mother. We, uh, we're studying the book of John right now. Okay. Um, so did you interact with the police themselves when you got there? Or what ended up happening? So what happened? And I messaged you. Remember, you did. so I, I, I get back from Bible study. My mom's dropping me off from Bible study, right? And my whole street shut down. We're pulling in close to my house, and not just my street, but, like, the side streets are shut down. And there's, like, 20, 30 fucking cruisers. And um, we pull up to the intersection of George and Bernardo, which I don't really care to say because I'm already doxxed. I'm sort of desensitized to that. But we pull up to the corner of George and Bernardo. And I get out, and I walk up to, to an officer on the corner, and I say, I live down there at 723 George. Like, can I go home? And they go, no. There's a standoff there right now. You can't go home. I say, okay. So then I messaged you, and I said I would call in and say what was going on. I, I, I think I messaged you here. Do you mind if I read what I said? No, I don't mind, no. Um, so I messaged you. Here, just let me flip to that. Fucking Discord. Where are you? Oh, yeah, you'd be at the top. Um, so I, I messaged you, and I said, um, uh, I said, was just about home, but my whole apartment complex has been evacuated. The cops are all over. They say I can't go that's... home yet. I'll call in quickly from my phone while I'm waiting, if that's possible, because I thought I was going to wait. But then after like 20 minutes, I decided to go back to my mom's house, right? So I went back there while we were waiting it out. And then like half an hour later, the cops fucking called me and said, uh, like, is there someone in your apartment? I said, no, I just, I live there alone. And I guess whoever called in, like the call was for Ashton. And the reason why I know that wasn't someone that was like Ashton wants to say that it was some fucking America first or some groiper that didn't know the fucking lore, but everyone knows the fucking lore. Like there's no way anyone that has any fucking idea of what's going on in the sphere and knows where I live thinks that PPP still lives here. Um, so they fucking, uh, they called me and said that, what happened? They said it was a hostage situation, 
And eventually, what they ended up telling me in the end was that um, the call, it was like a robot voice that said um, Ashton had shot his wife and she had bled out. And if the cops. Well, we knew that's bullshit. Out, I said he had a wife himself. right off top. So we knew that's bullshit. But sorry, wait, repeat what you said. Said he shot his wife. Yeah, and she was she had bled out, and she was already dead. And then if the cops entered the apartment, he would shoot himself. Um, so I um, I said, okay, well I'll come down. I came down and I met the police outside the fucking apartment and gave them like the floor plan of the apartment to go through. And uh, then I fucked off back to my mom's, and then I ended up going to the police station and fucking wow. giving my statements and all that. I explained to them how Sargon was the rape man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mentioned that the other day because somebody was asking me about my shop, and I was like, yeah, that's one of the only shirts that they took down, and it's a picture of Sargon's face, and it just says rape in giant letters underneath. Uh, I didn't even get a copy of the shirt, and they took it down. Some viewers got a copy, though, at least. Um, but, yeah, I remember that uh, that whole arc. Um, so the police came. Now, you know, Ashton PPP went on Twitter and said he got swatted. Now, why do you think he tried to claim... I mean, he didn't get swatted. That's not even... No, he's not bullshit. there. It's fucking gay. It's gay as fuck that he would claim that. The cops, when I got into the police station, one of the first things they told me is that they had contacted his father looking for him. And his dad said that he was in New Mexico, which I don't believe. I, um, I think that... I mean, there's a chance he's gone down to New Mexico to meet up with the Louisiana succubus or whatever the case is. But I think more likely his father was just lying to the police for him so they wouldn't find him. But nothing ever came of that to him. He said every Ashton Parks in fucking Canada got swatted. That's bullshit. The cops wouldn't have fucking told him that. That's an absolute fucking fabrication. I don't know why. Um, only I got fucking swatted. They called his father, and that's all that fucking happened for him, right? Now, you mentioned his father. I mean, I don't know how deep you want to get into this. I think you alluded to it before, though, him possibly getting um i don't know if it was his father or his brother used to beat him up or something like that is that no his father his father used to slap him around is that true or yeah 100 percent. one of the most proud stories ashton's ever told me is when he was finally old enough that he could overpower his father and he put his father's head through the fucking drywall well that's quite but all a... his life up until that his father would beat him up so like it was like a constant thing. So this is like a thing in his 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 head. Yeah, his father's a faggot, you know. Now, realistically, the reason why his father's like that is his father was a jail guard. He was a uh, prison guard for the majority of his career, and you know, as a prison guard, you just like you become a really better person, you know. Yeah, I mean, COs are not known for being. <laughs> Correctional officers, that's what they call them here uh, in the U.S., yeah. But I have no problem saying that because his father said again and again that I was a faggot and that Ashton was a faggot for living with me and this and that and always tried to say bad shit about me, so fuck that guy. Now, why did he have it in for you, do you think, or what was his deal? I don't know. I um, Because I tried to fucking help. Ashton in a lot of regards, I imagine, and I uh, took some control away from his father, controlling Ashton's life, um, which was for the better for Ashton, as we've seen now. He has become an independent person, uh, which without me, he never would have be never would have fucking become. He'd still be living with his parents and being fucking under the rule of his father. But I, I helped him become an independent man, and I think his father sort of resented that. Now, what if uh, Ashton messaged you and he was just like? Let's be friends again. Let's put it all behind us. What would you say? Um, well, if you wanted me, I wouldn't let him move back in, obviously. I, um, I I fucking love the guy, you know, and I think the Christian thing to do if he honestly repented would be to forgive him. But it wouldn't be a good idea to move him back in, anything like that. If he wanted me on a stream, my stipulation would be that I'd want an upfront fee of $250 and then fucking maybe 30% of Super Chats. Now... Has there been any, like, you know, he kind of just dropped you or whatever. Has, has he ever reached out to you or shown any repentance at all? Or One time. I still have some of his stuff, and I reached out to him a few times. Like, when I got rid of the couches, like the couch he used to sleep on and the other couch that he sat on, because obviously I wasn't going to sit on the fucking couch. 
because the guy's fucking pants are down all the time and he has a poopy fucking asshole and it's fucking left like fucking altitude an altitude map on the fucking couch and the couch just smelled horrendous so I, I messaged him and said if you want the couches i'm gonna take them to the dump but if you want them i'll get them to you and i also like i offered him i i get food delivery um and because of that i have gift cards for it so i offered him like a free week of groceries and all that sort of thing like try to help him get on his feet and uh getting him the stuff but he never got back to me the only time he ever got back to me was when I, me and Gahul were going out the louisiana succubus he called me one morning <laughs> and i pick up and he was just fucking rattled he was so angry and he says to me he goes you leave her out of this this isn't fair to her you're not being fair to her. I said, fuck this bitch. <laughs> you know, I, uh, you know, that's the only time he's ever reached out to me. And when I wouldn't comply with that, and I told him that was fucking retarded, he hung up on me, right? That's the only time I've heard of him since. He's blocked me on Discord since. Now, well, we'll get back to the succubus in a minute, but what about the, the couch action and the, the shit on the toilet? And was this a chronic problem for him? I mean... Well, there's a common misconception that, like, he would actually, like, shit on the toilet seat and I would clean it up. The reality like was residue. The, guy, the guy's had his gallbladder removed, right? And he has, like, a really? problem with shitting where, like, he shits, like, six, seven times. Wait, wait, wait. He's already had his gallbladder taken out? Yeah. Damn. Okay. But so he shits like six, seven times a day, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like like food just flies through him. Yeah. So he shits all day long. And you got to think like, have you ever had diarrhea, Ralph? And you wipe your ass to the point where like it starts to bleed. Um, I mean, I'd rather not go into my my. But you know what I'm talking about. Serious like, diarrhea. Talking yeah. About you specifically, but, like I've dealt with that. Like you don't have to right. be a to have dealt with that when you have diarrhea and you shit like three or four times in the day. Right. And you've so much like your asshole gets raw. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough so, situation because PVP shits like six, seven times a day. If he was to wipe his asshole completely clean, like it would get pretty bad. It would get, it would get to be a pretty fucking bloody mess. <laughs> you know? So, uh, so because there is always that residual shit in his ass and because uh, the guy is so sweaty, because he sweats so profusely, when he would sit on the toilet seat, there would always be a streak of fucking residual shit from his <sighs> ass, like a little brown stain. And, like, the guy, like, I, I, I fucking got the guy to wipe it up, but, like, I'm very autistic about cleanliness. Like, I'm, like, a fucking almost like a, who is it, Howie Mandel or whatever, sort of germaphobe. Like, well, I'm you don't have to be Howie Mandel to not want shit streaks all over the place. But uh, but anyway, yeah, I know what you mean. You're, you're So upset. I take a dump pretty fucking methodically, like, before I get in the shower at the start of the day. Like, my body clock is right on point for that. So before I take a dump every day, I would just fucking wipe off the toilet seat. Even if he had wiped it off, I would fucking wipe it off. It didn't even matter. I had a Lysol bottle. I would spray it with Lysol and fucking can wipe it off even if he cleaned it off because he wouldn't do as good of a job as i autistically would do right so that's not it wasn't like like actual shit on the seat but like a like a streak of like residual shit and sweat from where he would sit on the toilet from his ass right because there's always that residual fucking shit in his ass and that that's why like residuals yeah, that's why the couch smelt so bad, right? Because his pants are falling down, and he'd sit on the fucking couch bare ass. So his <laughs> pants are falling down. So obviously, some of the residue is going to have some transference over to the couch. Then, I mean, yeah. So that's why I got rid of the couch. So his couch is just <laughs> emanating. It smells like ass, basically, um, and sh with shit residue. So even like like the stank, like stank ass, is probably what it smells like. Is that? Yeah, it was pretty fucking bad. Did he did he come and collect this furniture, or did he just leave it for the? No, I took it to the dump. Buzzards. <laughs> uh so no, that's a real thing. I had a couple offers on Discord. <laughs> I took it to the dump of people that wanted to buy it. You could have sold it, probably. I could have. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you probably could have sold it. Yeah. But I did it. Now the the. Louisiana succubus. Does does this uh, bitch have any profile, or where, what does she just lurk discords, or 
you know, yeah, what's... her name was Snacks on Discord. She was a member of like all the Order of Nine Angles, Satanist fucking servers. Um, she like welds. She has like leathery palms and leathery talons from fucking welding. That's wild. She's vanished ever since that Google documentary, though. She might still be talking to PPP. Maybe he is in fucking New Mexico and he's met up with her. You know, maybe she fucking beats him off with her leathery talons. Now, what was this about the uh, high heels and he was uh, paying e-girls to model high heels for him? Well, that wasn't when when we were living in this apartment, but when we lived at the Bethune house and before that, he had, like, a collection of high heels, and there was a local girl. Wait, 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 wait. all the fucking bills, and he'd get to come over and model the high heels. So he had a collection of high heels that he kept, but he would have women model. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. So what would be the going rate for something like I'm something like this? And they would just model the high heels. They wouldn't suck them off or anything, right? They might have. I don't know. I never really got that into it. But he paid all their fucking bills. Really? And she always had a boyfriend too, right? Like he always wanted her to like dump her boyfriend and get with him. But like she'd just come over and fucking cuck her boyfriend with him, but then go back to her boyfriend. So she, but he would be paying like her phone bills and shit like that. Everything, rent, phone bills. Really? He might even still do that to this day, Ralph. No, I shit. always told him that she's fucking to get, like get away from her and stop paying for her shit. Um, but he has a real soft spot for this woman. So he's, but it's just somebody he's known, like, and he's kind of been attracted to for a while. He's known her since high school. So, I mean, this is like, I see people in chat saying simp. I mean, this is classic simp behavior. Oh, yeah, like the epitome. Yeah, I was going to say, this is actual (laughs) simp behavior. This is not just, yeah, I was going to say, this is not just joking about simp behavior. This is actual simp behavior, literally. literally. I might have sucked him off for it. Well, if he got sucked off for it, you know, that's a different story. You know, you have to change the category. Uh, But still, he's paying all of her bills. I mean, I would argue... I don't know, still some simpery going on. But if you get sucked off for it, it does change it a little bit. But it doesn't sound like he's getting sucked off. But it's not the Christian thing to do, Ralph. Like, it doesn't it sound very Christian. No, it doesn't. Boyfriend, you shouldn't commit adultery. That's wrong. Well, no, it doesn't sound Christian at all. I never said that. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It doesn't. I don't think he's getting the blowjob, though, is what I'm saying. It sounds like he's getting strung along and paying some bitches bills while she goes home and gets the D from Chad. Uh, and comes back and models some fucking shoes for this dork uh, while he pays her rent. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, that's... <laughs> oh, fuck. At one point, at one point, the guy she was dating was selling us weed and, like, <laughs> fucking cocking this guy, <laughs> you know, and paying her bills. Oh, fuck. Dude. Now, how did he reconcile? Now, you mentioned some of this stuff and some of the things that caused the friction, you know, kind of when you're needling him about his gambling and stuff like that. How did he reconcile, you know, this arguably, you know, degenerate, touch of degeneracy, whatever you want to put it. Uh, how did he reconcile that with, with uh, you know, the fire and brimstone preaching and, and, and that uh, aspect? I don't know, Ralph, and that's why I say I don't know if his... When I told the story about, like, his quote from Osama bin Laden and the strong Christian culture, uh, because nature abhors a vacuum, I don't know if he, like, truly fucking held these convictions in his Christianity or if he just fucking preached them to keep the culture strong. I really don't know. I like to think, you know, when we had that second fight and he moved out, um, I brought that up to him when he moved back in. Um, and he said to me that he was hurt, that I doubted his convictions and his Christianity. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's a hard one. I don't really know his fucking mentality on that, to be honest. Now, did you feel bad about doing that? Did you, did you did you sincerely doubt his convictions and Christianity? Yeah, I, ser- I sincerely doubted his convictions at that point. I do still sincere- sincerely doubt his convictions, but I don't know for a fact, right? right? Like, I don't know for a fact whether he just fucking proclaims these convictions for the culture because that's the culture he comes from, or if he can claim proclaims these convictions because he does really believe in Christ, right? Like, I, I, I don't know. 
I um, I think a lot of the things he's doing recently go against the things that he would preach in Christianity, and I hope he repents of that. I honestly do hope hope the best for the guy and hope that he repents and uh, comes back to the light of Christ. Um, but I, I just don't know. Now, what about... Um... First of all, I'm looking through here. Now, what about the dedication to the to the truth uh, or lack thereof? Now, obviously, I know for a fact he said a lot of false things about me. Um, and I'm looking here uh, at Bibble uh, as well. Bibble was wondering if he had a hand in getting his channel flagged. He wanted me to bring that up. I don't know if you know anything about that. Um, but, uh, I don't know. but you know what I got to say? Yeah. When when him and Flamenco and Andy were talking about like bringing up a lawsuit against you guys for DMCA yeah. strike, um, I almost wanted the fucking DMCA <laughs> strike guy just so he would fucking fire up the lawsuit against <laughs> guys. Just that's a fucking gay off. I thought that would be hilarious, but I could do something like that. That would actually be funny. Now. Uh... <laughs> Let's see. I'm looking through here. Hold on. Um, so I see uh, I see that. But what about like so uh, obviously so I guess what I'm saying is I know he's knowingly repeated falsities many times. Uh, but did he ever did that bother him at all? Or did, was it just like get over at any cost? What It didn't matter what the newest outrage was. Now, by the way, not no, everything. Like, PVP he's, fucking hates you, Ralph. Yeah. Like, okay. PVP has a serious seat like searing fucking hatred in his heart for you ever since that interaction on the kill stream when yeah. you made fun of him for showing his asshole like he thought he was going to call into the kill stream and you were going to talk about how great he was for showing his asshole that he would be just like what flamenco became <laughs> you know right. but you made fun of him and ever since he just had a searing fucking hatred in his heart but it's similar like because I um, I was going to go to school for plumbing, right? So before PPP moved out, I got into the local college that he got kicked out of for plumbing. And um, because of the vaccine mandates, I, I, I submitted my religious exemption for not getting vaccinated, and they declined it. And I got kicked out of the college for that. And uh, I was going to show all the documents. I sort of fucking never really did anything with that. Um, but I... Um, PVP said to me off camera, you know, he said, let's go and burn down John Gowan's house. <laughs> like he has a searing <laughs> hatred for these people that kicked him out of the college. He has a searing hatred for the, uh, the people that they think took away his preaching career in the church because they wouldn't let him fucking preach every week um, and pay him for that. And that's actually it. Like that's the crux of his issue. Why he fell out with the church because PVP thought, that he would be the preacher and that they should pay him to preach. But um, they wouldn't do that. They said he wasn't ready. So that was actually the crux of the conflict. Nothing to do with you. Um, you never called anything like that. They wouldn't, they wouldn't pay him to preach. So he had a falling out with them. Um, he has a searing hatred for them as a result of that. He has a searing hatred for the people that kicked him out of college. He thinks that these people ruined his life. Um, and he, I think he has the same searing hatred for me now, right? Like, he seems to. He doesn't get over these things. Like, he holds these grudges, which isn't the right thing to do. He needs to get the hatred out of his heart. It's not right. Um, you know, he needs to get over it. He seems to, and that's kind of why I brought up. Uh, and you know, I know we're doing like a, I'm doing a little introspection here, a little bit of Barbara Walters type stuff, you know, uh, personal I conflict. Don't even know who Barbara Walters. I uh, know that's an American reference, but uh, interviewer <laughs> here in America, old bitch, I'm old anyway, old lady. Down there in America. Yeah, down in America. Um, but uh, th that's kind of what I was getting at. He seems to actually hold a, a real hatred towards you, and I know actually, and of course, you know, we've had our arguments, beefs, etc. But you're good. I mean, you seem like a good guy, honestly. Uh, and you seem like a guy, I think it comes across even on this show tonight. Uh, and, you know, you've revealed some things, thrown a few barbs, but you've been honest. And also you seem to still care about 
about uh, Ashton deep down, you know, and not even deep down. It's right there on the surface. No, uh, I fucking love the guy. Yeah. You know, I hope the best for him. But he I doesn't really seem do. to feel that way about you, I guess, is, is what I was about to follow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's what I was going to follow it up with. He seems to, like, really hate you, basically. And I remember messaging you, and I was like, you know, this internet thing, it is what it is, um, right? It's 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 fun i love it it's my job but it's also a farce uh in a lot of ways um even for the people in it who live it uh and you know you guys live together we're friends in real life and i remember remember messaging you and i was like that's kind of fucked <laughs> you know that's kind of fucked up right you lost a real life friend over this uh but he yeah. seems to like really have taken it seriously yeah and, and i hate you now yeah, and it's just silly because, like I said, when he moved back in that final time, like, that was the agreement we came to, what was going to happen. And he acts like, oh, I, I had no idea, and I can't believe Surfer did this. But, like, that was the agreement we came to. Um, You know what I mean? Like, Well, well see, and that part silly. wasn't told, basically. Uh, and I remember even we were going through it. And, I, and, and you talk about it, I guess – in the video, but I didn't know all the backstory where you're like, I told you or, or something. You're like, I told you when you move back in, if this happened again, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But I didn't realize he had just moved out and then back in. Right. Like I didn't realize it was so back to back. Um, I was thinking this is, you know, maybe a, a while in the past or whatever, but that had just happened. I didn't even know that until tonight. Actually, when you started retelling it, I didn't realize it was just two weeks ago that you'd had a physical conflict with this guy in your own home uh and that's another thing where it's like that's your house right somebody fucking assaults me in my house and i let him come back and stay again and it, and it's like on the verge of happening again it's like and did you guys actually get into a, some more physicality that night no so okay I, I almost had stream, yeah, that's what and I, I went to bed and I got up like uh, two hours later and I came out to the living room to make something to eat. And I fucking, uh, I made something to eat and I put on some music on the TV. And what he does, he fucking like, he's listening to music on his headphones. But when I put on the music, he fucking changes it to like the fucking receiver and plays his fucking music over my music. And I said, turn that off, bro. And he fucking gets up and he says, what do you think's going to fucking happen? And off camera, he tried to fucking fight me again. So that was the point. I just fucking turned around, walked out the fucking door and called the police. Well, he's trying to bully you in your own home. <laughs> I mean, what are yeah, you supposed to you do? Know, it's just, I'm not going to put up with that. Yeah. And, you know, like, I, <laughs> like I, I hate to sound fucking soft, but like the guy was twice my weight. I was 170 pounds at the fucking time. And he was like fucking 350, <laughs> you know, and we're in a close fucking compartment. So it's like the you and Worski fight where Worski curls yeah. up in a ball. You know, well, the only other happen. option is to go <laughs> grab like a bottle or a knife or something and go, you know what I mean? And go with this guy. There's only, you know what I mean? There's no option to <laughs> fight fairly uh, against this dude. And you're in your own home and he's trying to tell you what is and what isn't that to me i don't know that's one of my pet peeves obviously i feel i feel like it's like that for most people um yeah. but it's like oh you're in your you talked about it earlier where that black dude was like oh you can't say this it's like yeah uh, that was the crux of that yeah. fucking battle yeah you which, know you know you don't want to know some lore on that battle so after pvp beat up <laughs> that fucking black guy after that interaction him and our other pole tired roommate went to the police and said that they were going to charge us for a hate crime no shit <laughs> and sent us a picture of the black guy all beaten and bruised, bruised which i still have on my phone i couldn't find right now off the top of my head i wish i could to show you but this fucking black guy all beaten and bruised they were texting us saying they were going to charge us with a hate crime <laughs> Which might could actually happen in Canada, by the way, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not so. I mean, I guess it could happen here these days, actually, as much as we talk about Canada. Um, now, so, I mean, I, I know of the niggas. I lived with them. <laughs> I dealt with them firsthand. And, you know, I love nigga culture. Like, I'm a fucking the epitome of a wig nut. I listen to fucking rap music and this and that. Like, I really am a wig nut. And that's why when I say to your co-host, Wignat Gavin McInnes, like when I say fucking Wignat, I don't mean that to fucking be disparaging or anything. Like I am a proud fucking Wignat. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you are. <laughs> now yeah, you are. <laughs> we like it though. You're pretty cool. Now I appreciate that, bro. 
Now, let's see. I'm trying to think. I mean, I'm thinking we pretty much covered everything, really. Um, you know, if you have any more questions, by the way, chat, throw those well, in. Uh, but I'm thinking, like, we, I pretty I wanted, much hit everything I wanted to hit. Go ahead. I wanted to ask it because, uh, like, PVP said that the thing with Jesse was kayfabe, which it obviously fucking wasn't. Yeah, but you said so. with Jesse that it was kayfabe. Were you interacting with Jesse before Friday? No. Okay, because I was under the impression that, like, Jesse sent that super oh, chat. Oh, he had super chatted, before. but that's not true. He had super chatted my show a couple times after I got swatted, and I said, swatting is gay. I was like, swatting's fucked up. You know, I don't support that type of shit. Somebody's going to get killed, which is what I actually think, even though I hate a lot of these. <laughs> Some of these motherfuckers I literally do kind of feel a little bit of hate towards these days. But I still don't support swatting. I don't want to see anybody get gunned down in their house. There's sometimes people are living with family. Even Worski, you know, I make fun of him living with his family. I don't want to see his fucking family get shot and shit like that. That's fucked up. Uh, so I said that on air, and he super chatted me and said, oh, that's, you know, I agree with that. Joey Here, Joe, Joe sent $5. You can't let Sophie okay. leave without going into some detail about this Nine Angles cult. Who are they? What do they do? Okay, we'll talk about this. Some. Again, we don't have to leave right now, by the way. What I'm saying no, is, if got, you have got John Mormon, Shaggy we'll, we'll touch too. on that too. So we'll touch on Mormon His Shaggy. Story is important. It's an important fucking story. We'll do both. We'll do both. But what I'm saying is, if if you want to do other stuff, send it in. If you have any more questions, if you want topics addressed, because I've already went through everything I wanted to hit. Really, I, I can't think of anything I left out. Anyway, um, so just let me know. What's up, Dalton? I see Dalton in the chat. Um, now. What was that? Fuck, I just forgot what I was about to say. Anyway, um, I see this is brought up here. Um, what about the Nine Angles cult? Uh, so the Order of the Nine Angles, and I'm very interested in, like, these di different Satanist groups. Like, part of my zeal of being a Christian, like, I am very interested in the opposition. I know, so I know they're fucking where they're coming from and this and that. I know that they're, why they're wrong and uh, how to defeat them. Um, the Order of the Nine Angles, which I have a couple of their texts, actually, in my library. But uh, the Order of the Nine Angles is like this Satanist group that's fucking, like, partially run by the feds, right? Like... Um, the Order of the Nine Angles is like, like their indoctrination, um, to become a member of the Order of the Nine Angles, first you have to go like live in a cave in the middle of the woods for like 30 days and isolate yourself from society, right? And then after that, like, that like raises you up in their initiation and then you have to join like, it doesn't matter whether it's a far left group or a far right group. Um, like, do you know the, the neo-Nazi organization, The Base? Yes. I mean, I don't know yeah, him personally, so, but yeah, yeah, I'm familiar. The Order of the Nine Angles is very affiliated with the base and uh, like Antifa as well. So after you've like stayed in the cave for like 30 days, you have to join like Antifa or like, um, like the base. It doesn't matter whether it's right wing or left wing. It just has to be an extremist group, right? And you have to become like a fucking extremist. Not that you really believe in it, but that you're using it to your fucking Satanist ends. And... Um, <laughs> That's really what I know about them. They, um, it has involved with PVP. Yeah, I was about to say, go ahead. The Louisiana Succubus is like, uh, like affiliated with the Order of the Nine Angles. She like does art for them and th this sort of thing, right? She's a Satanist. Um, yeah, and he, I think you missed it. I think you're watching, like, in the uh, Ghoul's Godspiracy video, the last interview, the end of it, is a fucking guy that like interacted with her in the uh, the Order of the Nine Angles and uh, like explains how she's affiliated with the Order of the Nine Angles. But that's all in the Gutspiracy video. If anyone's curious about that, check out the Rules Gutspiracy video. The last fucking interview is all about that. No, but wait, she's a Satanist. Yeah, this is PPP's girlfriend. How does he reconcile? Uh, you know, being a preacher. And having a fucking Satanist girlfriend. Well, once again, 
I don't know if PVP is like ever since he moved. Well, out, look, we did, okay, so, true. All right, that's effort. that's true. We don't know now, but even at that point, that was just a few months ago. Uh, no, you're right about that. There is something fishy there, and that's why I say I don't really know if he holds his Christian convictions or if it's just like a culture thing. The other thing about women is when you fucking. You know, you fuck a woman, you get her straight, she'll adopt whatever your politics well, is. Well, that's true. It I'm, I'm aware of that. He's a Satanist fucking idiot. I'm you aware of that, yeah. Right. I'm very well familiar with that. But, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Did she renounce it? Like, I don't know. Maybe he's uh, I don't, I don't dicking her down know. for Jesus. I don't know. I didn't I didn't think about that. <laughs> but, but she's uh, very involved with that. I had a brief stint on Tinder, and I remember interacting with this Satanist bitch who I fucking matched with just because she was a Satanist bitch, and I told her I was going to take her to church. <laughs> she probably liked that. Or did she? I don't know. Maybe they, <laughs> I don't know. You're going to bring her to the Lord. All right, now, um, let's see. So, oh, nine a there was something I was talking about right before um, oh, nine a I can't remember where I was going to go with that now. Um, now, this Mormon dude will bring that up, too. Uh, let's see. The other super chat was about oh, nine a as well. The satanic cult. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to super chats, bro. I hope I'm bringing you in some level of super chats. Well, we mostly we just been listening with the fucking conce- casino. We got a BTFO. The well, I made BTFO. most of my money last night. We kind of just been listening uh, to you. you. Know, Signal Boot, who's been sending them all their money, has reached out to me on Discord. Really? Oh, I mean, is that the guy that sent him? Getting Ralph a thousand dollar donations from Signal Boot. Who is that guy? Hog, the fucking faggot lesbian casino. Who is that guy? I didn't even, I, I saw, I heard about that, but I didn't really the know. The queer fucking idiot casino. The chemo casino, um, <laughs> which is my favorite nickname for it. I tried Quino casino. That doesn't, that doesn't sound as good. I think chemo casino. I think that sounds better. Beardson, I was in Beardson's chat when fucking PPP was making fun of fucking Dalton Claude Fal- Falter for shitting his pants. Like, PVP's fucking underwear. Like, he would leave his underwear on the ground in the fucking hallway where he slept, and his underwear were caked in fucking shit. Ugh. He has a perpetually poopy asshole. Um, you know, so PVP has no place making fun of any other man for shitting his pants. I know countless stories of PVP shitting his pants. And if Beardson would like to reach out to me or Dalton... <laughs> Um, when PVP is trying to make fun of them for shitting their pants, I'm an open book. We should have done a stream just specifically dedicated to that. I feel like we missed the boat now right here at the end of the show. Like, what the fuck? There seems seems to be a wealth of stories about this guy shitting his pants. Well, you know, they tried to say, I, I didn't actually shit my pants. Uh, and that's the other, I could talk about this for years. But it's like, dude, there's so much shit out there about, if, if you think if I like fucking just like sharded myself or took a fart on air that I wouldn't just say like I took anyway. Um, but when you well, say, a well, yeah, what the, the fuck? Wall. I you have farted right, on air. Yeah. I mean, it happens. Like right, what the bro. fuck? I've done a lot worse than that on air. Uh, there used to be, not be a camera <laughs> on me. Like I want, I want to get into all, all the shenanigans that's ever happened on the kill stream. Uh, Medicare type action there. But, uh, You know, may or may not have occurred in the past. I'm just going to say some of these uh, seminal moments uh, may have been uh, seminal as well. Here we go. Joey Joe Uh, Joseph, $10. Here's another 10 bucks for the extra content lately. Thank you. There are many imitators, but there is one Joey Joe Joe, and he is a Ralph Amali. Nigga. (laughs) Base Joey Joe Joe. Shout out Joey Joe Joe. Shout out Joey Joe 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 Joe. Shout out fucking Sargoy of Kakad. Those right. are the three fucking old bags. Not like quite it. as old as Gator. That's uh, Gator true. The, is eldest. the eldest bag, as we know. <laughs> but, what uh, about Gator? What do you think about Gator, man? Right. You know what? Because you came on here and you know, you know, you've revealed some stuff or whatever. But it's still good natured, really. You haven't pulled out DMs. You haven't sit there, real or not real, by the way, because uh, there's been some fakery coming from Gator too. But I won't get into that. But you know what I mean? Like, the dude's been on a personal destruction campaign. Hold on, three dollars. Got to change up the phrasing so it doesn't get stale. Try anal evacuation <laughs> in his underwear. <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like, he's been on some... They talk about personal destruction. Like, that's literally what he's been on towards me, and I don't feel like you've been that way towards uh, PPP. What do you think about that? 
No, Gator's a faggot. Um, the, um, the reality is, like, I don't have much of a take on Gator, but the reality is, do you remember when uh, Full Blast Forever turned coat? And um, yeah. Full Blast Forever w- was going to have Godwinson and PvP restream your content and yeah. make fun of it on the fucking Full Blast Forever channel? Yeah. Um, PvP was down, but Godwinson said no. Uh, Godwinson said that I will not fraternize with a traitor. Um, wow. He should have stayed with Ralph. If he's going to be a traitor to Ralph, we can't trust him to not be a traitor to us. I will not fraternize with traitors. And that's something that Godwinson would be ashamed of in PPP, that now he's fraternizing with traitors like Gator and Flamenco. It's it, fucking despicable. You know, I heard... I fuck traitors. You know, I heard Godwinson say that during one of his videos, and uh, I think he was talking about Gator, actually. Yeah. Um, but he was like, the day is going to come when he's going to turn. He's talking about me. He's like, he's going to turn on Ralph. Uh, and he's going to come on all these shows, and all these people are going to, you know, try to get my hand, and we love you now. But I don't want to fuck yeah. with him. But I'm not going to fuck with him. And he literally went into just what you said. And I and I watched that, and we talked about earlier how I, how I have a – certain respect for Godwinson because he's good for one reason, but also he kind of lives by what he said. You know what? He kind of yeah. sticks to what he says. Right. And he has his code, uh, and he, and he sticks by, he's, he's himself, right? Like he, he just lets the chips fall where they may. I feel like I'm the same way in a different way. Uh, but I, I just, I don't know. I just always respected that. And it's something that I've always said too. If somebody's going to do that, especially to their good, good friend, quote unquote, uh, you know, there's nothing they won't do to anybody really on this planet. Yeah. So, and again, I don't feel like you've went that far, uh, tonight, um, at all. Um, but you know, when you see it, right. Um, just the, the full, like trying to destroy basically. And it's like, if they'll do that to their friend, you know, to their friend, like, and there's a difference, right? Like, I'm not a traitor to PPP. I would have fucking defended the guy till the end. But he well, like I said earlier, he could call you tomorrow. I mean, you probably stabs be... you in the back. You don't fucking, yeah. like, you're not a traitor to yeah, the exactly. traitor, right? Yeah, that's how I feel, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, and honestly, I mean, I feel like if he called you sincerely, I mean, you said it earlier, you'd probably be cool with him again uh, if, yeah. if he was, you know, sincere and like, hey, you know what, let's just – put this behind us, you know, we made some mistakes or whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've always said the same thing. Um, if somebody's willing to do that, you can't really trust a person like that. Um, ever. So Ian Miles Chong was the example, uh, I use, but there are other examples and Gator to me is the latest. All right, now let's play this fucking Did, nerd did you bitch. see the rear naked choke I put him in when he was I here? I would like to see it. An well, actual, the video, not like, Andy. I'm at Keemstar. I'm talking about Keemstar. Where, no, I'm talking uh, about Keemstar. PVP is kneeling on his neck like Derek Chauvin. We're reenacting the George Floyd thing, but it was PVP kneeling on Worski's neck. Worski couldn't take it for the full eight minutes, right? He went like four minutes with PVP on his neck, which you can't really well, blame fuck. on. PVP yeah, I was going to say, I don't think I could take it either. Yeah. Shit. But so I did the last four minutes, right? And then Worski fucking, like, broke out of it and tried to wrestle me, and I put him in a fucking rear naked choke and submitted him. Dude, Worski's weak, man. That guy is, like, actually weak, like, physically weak. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't have any strength on him at all. Like, he's like a crackhead. Like, I'm serious. Like, I mean, he's built like a crackhead, too. Like, I mean, he's he doesn't have any pop, and he doesn't have any, like, you know, like, grab you. If he grabs you, like, you just bust out of it. You know what I mean? Like, he's not... Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Dolphin. Remember to like and subscribe.